in the name of Jesus Christ. Beyond us may men see your power. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands. Your majesty. Majesty. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Hallelujah There are five things that will always happen for as long as we live serving the purposes of God in and through this platform. Number one, every time we gather, there must be encounters. An encounter is an experience that makes God and his principles real in your life. Encounters. Number two, there must be transformation. The name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Number three, we must give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to reveal the love and the power of Jesus through signs, wonders, and miracles. Let me tell you, I believe in miracles. I really believe in miracles. Number four, there must be impartations of all sorts. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. Men can carry graces and our possibilities in this kingdom are defined by the kinds and the levels of graces that we carry thou anointest my head with oil and i see the proof of what is on my head by looking at my cup he doesn't anoint my cup if something is wrong with my cup the problem is not the cup the problem is what is on my head and then finally we must always provide an opportunity for fellowship how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron down to his bed his garment he says there the lord hath commanded the blessing hallelujah praise the name of the lord just few minutes and we'll be seated but while i sat back there i think it was david who was ministering I the Lord was showing me a vision and in that vision I saw someone with what looks like um, a cleaner you know when you write on a board and you're cleaning that's what I saw happening just cleaning and the scripture that came to me is blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us and I'm just going to raise one song We'll be seated shortly but i want you to bring all those under the anointing there are families this is not just individuals individuals may be under the anointing but this is a ministration for families there are handwritings that have followed people for many years you may not even know handwritings that authorize favor to leave you handwritings that authorize good things to leave you healing rain is falling down Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. One more time, let it be from the depth of your heart. Your healing rain. Is falling down, healing rain is falling down. In the main auditorium, all the overflows down to the basement and outside, our Zaria family following, our global family following. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare everyone 
who belongs to this category where there are handwritings please bring them out and ordinances that will not let you go this is koinonia and in the name of jesus the christ of god exalted both as lord and king i declare that those handwritings are blotted out now those handwritings are blotted out now everywhere whoever has been a victim of demonic writings kataparuskiata writings on females writings on males writings on educated ones uneducated ones writings that wait for seasons to be activated in the name of jesus christ i declare right now may those writings be blotted out writings against your finances writings against your health writings against your victory writings against your lifting in the name that is above all names this night this night not tomorrow not next week not monday this night open your mouth begin to declare i blot out by the power of the blood every handwriting help them every handwriting Lift your voice and pray. There is power in the name of Jesus. There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. It breaks every chain. It removes every chain. It breaks every chain. Please don't be distracted. You are in church. We are praying. God is settling serious issues here. We came to receive. I'm still praying. God is not done yet. Listen to me. Listen. There are families. There is a limit on you. Nobody rises beyond that limit. It doesn't matter whether you travel abroad. It doesn't matter whether you back a PhD. It doesn't matter. There seems to be a limit. Right now in the name of Jesus. At the count of three. I want you to shout the name Jesus. In the main auditorium. Down to the basement outside following from any nation as you shout that bar that has been set that you will not cross in the name of jesus the son of the living god fire burns that into pieces are you ready now one two three shout jesus upon families upon destinies bring them out every limit placed upon you every embargo placed upon you upon your political career upon your business now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is please bring them out hallelujah please pay attention there are families here that never finish anything you start but it never finishes no matter what whether it's a building project whether it's your spiritual life it does not the finisher's anointing is not there the moment you start something must happen on the way and abort that destiny i stretch my hands in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god if there is any family here that is under the yoke of aborting glorious destinies at the count of three i want you to shout that name again that is above all names as you shout that name that yoke must be broken are you ready now one two three shout jesus 
that altar that yoke in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now the Lord is that spirit the Bible says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it I'm saying it again anyone who is in fraternity with dark powers stopping you from finishing what God said should be finished right now in the name of Jesus may the earth open up and swallow them in the name of Jesus Christ please don't be tired though we are praying you came here listen one genuine encounter can bring to end decades of waste of time waste of destiny this is the house of God I want to pray a very serious prayer before we sit down how many of you know that destinies can be exchanged in the spirit that you can be living a life you know this is not my life i'm living another person's script it's in the bible where kings slew their children so they will live long in the name of jesus i'm praying now anyone under the sound help them please help them help them anyone under the sound of my voice who is living a script that is someone else's destiny programmed by witchcraft programmed by necromancy powers manipulating your destiny at the count of three i declare in the name of jesus there must be deliverance for you are you ready to shout again my god and my king anyone here whose destiny has been manipulated spiritually financially by the power that raised christ from the dead let there be liberty right now one two three shout jesus liberty restoration liberty restoration liberty restoration Hallelujah. Everything that should not have left your life, either by mistake it left or by manipulations it left your life, and yet it is part of your prophetic preordination. I stand by the voice of prophecy, I call it back to your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I call it back to your destiny. Opportunities, I call them back by prophecy. Relationships, I call them back by prophecy. You'll be seated shortly, but I'm praying. Who is Jane? Jane. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane. Will be seated shortly. My sister, Victor, shift please. That lady lifting her hands yes tap her for me lift your hands 
the Lord is saying oppression has come to an end over your family take that grace right now I command that spirit to let you go in the name of Jesus Christ never to return to you I use as a point of contact and I speak to everyone here the days of oppression comes to an end now who is Jane I'm hearing a name Jane I presume there may be many people help them please I want to pray for you the power of God is going to come on one of you there's a miracle that God is bringing to your family those who are out here don't rush to go back to your seat there's a reason why I ask that they bring you out I'll pray for you but the Lord is asking me to minister to a Jane and one of you standing here the power of God is going to come on you very quickly and you'll be back I will pray for everyone father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray the Bible says it shall be destroyed because of the anointing just help her hold her baby she can have the baby back after the prayer father anyone under the sound of my voice here that has been oppressed whose family has come under a demonic siege ah, I'm seeing like fire resting in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I declare right now that family I set on fire every covenant every ordinance I set on fire right now I set on fire right now I set on fire in the name of Jesus Christ I set on fire I burn every work of witchcraft every work of darkness against these families I release you into your prophetic destiny in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I just sense in my spirit before I pray for this once and we sit down I was so touched by the testimony of the woman and her her younger brother the woman with the boy who whose genotype was changed there are many people suffering silently under that demonic thing this upon which the devil oppresses you in the name of Jesus we come by the mystery of the blood the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of Abel and we declare these plagues are cancelled forever 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 Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My head. Please return to your seats rejoicing. Let's give Jesus praise. There's someone just help them will be seated shortly but I'm seeing someone you came here with um, your credentials in a brown file bring it come with it Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Jesus, the Son of God. is setting that gentleman free age-long captivity over his family stopping people from getting jobs and making progress but who shall say a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not declared it 
their, their deliverance is happening many people you see who are suffering it's not that they are bad people there are spirits that are standing the way of people my sister this lady in the name of jesus be delivered the one you are holding i stretch my hands for you and for your family the time has come for your liberty in the name of jesus christ miracles don't just happen no there is a gift called the walking of miracles look what is happening to them ladies and gentlemen these are people who were minding their business sitting and wondering why doors were not opening What's her name that lady my dear i want to pray for you you believe in miracles help them also they don't fall down just help them there there will be such an avalanche of jobs you believe what i'm telling you not just for those who are out here not just for those who are out here i'm speaking by the spirit of god I fear God and I will not tell you what God has not said there will be you will see people come to stand here miracles after miracles the gospel affects the well-being of people not just their spiritual destiny the gospel the true gospel affects the well-being of people I prophesy as I've been commanded and I declare by the Spirit of God the grace for increase on that wise let it come upon you supernatural jobs by the power of the holy ghost supernatural jobs for the glory of the name of the lord for the advancement of the gospel in the name of jesus christ it says where you have been deserted so that no man would pass through you you will become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations for those of you who have come out here because there was a specific word for you in the name of jesus i don't care whether it's a fresh job or it's promotion in the name of jesus i place grace on you go back with this grace and let it work wonders on your life my friend what do you do huh you are a project engineer with a company. I want to pray for you because what your own is not just a job there is a very serious increase that God is bringing <laughs> look at me my friend look at me just look at me first before you say amen understand what I'm saying this is not just for you but God wants to use you as a savior for your family you believe that you see in this kingdom when it comes from god it does not have a component of self-centeredness in it when he sends a word to jacob his intention is israel when he sends resources to jacob the intention is israel when he sends influence to jacob it is the character of men to be self-centered once it is me in this kingdom selfishness is sin it's not only bad is sin the character of love the law by which the new believer the new creation in christ lives by is that it gives so this is already a message for someone receiving just for myself my mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. when he sends a word to jacob when he sends a lifting to jacob it is because he intends for it to reach israel hallelujah hmm. praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear these words praise the lord let the people rejoice oh come 
to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him Friend, what's your name? This man. Huh? I want to pray for you. Where are you from? Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel bad. I have seen this thing more than hundred times as I minister to people. Every time the Lord opens my eyes and I see this tree. And I see written on it A L E K U. You know what that is? Yes. I want to pray for you. That's what I'm seeing again. We are not prophets of doom, we are ministers of life. Once we minister to you, it is not informing you about the trouble, we are bringing you out. The real power of God does not just inform you about what is happening and leaves you there, it delivers you, it brings you out. I stretch my hands and I command that influence and that demonic spirit to let you and all who are connected to you go free now in the name of Jesus Christ may doors be so open for you that it will you will marvel and wonder at the goodness of God in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ help him please in the name of Jesus Christ I apologize we are taking time I hope I'm not wasting your time there is a woman in here this is about four years at least you came here and your one prayer is fruit of the womb who is that I'm seeing someone come in this auditorium not just those outside I can I'll pray prophetically but there is someone here what's your name What's your name? What's the name of this one? Huh? Lillian. Lillian, come. Well, I, 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 I'm not sure I heard your names. Come and stand. The person I want to pray for, you are Lillian. Who is Jessica? What's your name? Jessica. You are Lillian. Two of you, are you friends? You came separately. You believe in the power of God? How long have you been married? How long have you been married this is the fourth year i want to pray for you you believe you will stand here with your children amen i believe in miracles the god that does wonders please don't cry father i pray for these precious ones they have stood here trusting believing for many of you you have been prayed for again and again and again and you're standing here wondering i'm sure it will be like before remember what peter said master we have toiled all night he said but nevertheless at thy word i stretch my hands in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god one of you will shout under the anointing loud in front here when that happens I just saw the healing power of God moving to you people now you see sometimes this is a ministry of signs and wonders so I take out time to explain these things so that when they happen you don't think this is a display of some superstition but the Lord does these things many times so that we will fear him he also does it to strengthen our faith now I'm ready to pray look what is happening to them Lift up your eyes to him, you will arise again, he will come and save you. If you lift up your eyes to him, you will arise again, he will come and save you. They looked on to him and their faces were lightened i stretch my hands and i declare according to the time of life i release an anointing upon all of you right now i declare by that grace in the name of jesus like eli declared unto anna 
according to the time of life return with your miracle children according to the time of life return with your miracle children and every power that is back of this tragedy we dislodge it in the name of jesus christ look and lee my brother lee look to jesus christ and lee it's recorded in his word hallelujah it's only that you look the lord bless you please go back to your seats return with your testimonies in the name of jesus this is what happens when you come to church please be seated god bless you good evening everyone oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever love you oh god you are my god and i will ever follow i will seek you in the morning and I have learned to walk in your ways For step by step you lead me And I will follow you Hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord Tonight what you are about to learn will change your life In the name of Jesus Christ Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 defines in very clear terms the assignment of a true shepherd. Jeremiah chapter 3, please give it to us and verse 15. The assignment of a true shepherd. I will give you pastors according to my heart. And if they are according to my heart, they have the singular assignment to feed you with knowledge and feed you with understanding that means knowledge and understanding are divine meals when you are served with this meal of knowledge and of understanding there is a predictable outcome you will become something very exact very intentional i will give you pastors after my heart acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers these are the requirements for growth and maturity in the spirit submission to doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers so every time we gather I will not fail to let us know that we are here gathered to learn to be mentored to be baptized into an exact body of spiritual truth realize that every time we meet there is a making there is an evolution there is a transition that is happening to us it is not the same version of you who came two weeks ago that is seated now no light is transiting you you will get to a point where you are so full of the light and the power of the holy spirit the results will begin to speak inevitably they will speak hallelujah the lord put a very powerful teaching in my heart and i'm sent to the body of christ primarily even though koinonia as a global family has anointed us to minister his word but 
most of the teachings that I bring are for the body of Christ regardless denomination regardless your the doctrinal differences that seem to divide us it is part of the reason why he brought us to this city and has projected us to the nations as instruments of unity balance dexterity and growth are we together We are lifted and we are strengthened in this kingdom not based on our longevity in the faith no time does not change anything time only reveals a 10 year old error can still destroy like a one year old error provided it is error are we together it takes understanding light it says but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light so tonight i pray in the name of jesus christ world over azaria family abuja family here and all who are following from their homes please pay attention if you are distracted when the word of god is coming be sure it is an attack it's an attack because it takes focus and concentration to receive there is an intellectual dimension to the reception of the word it's not just a spiritual affair alone your mind has to be active your mind has to be fruitful so even if your spirit is alive and your mind is distracted you see that that's why sometimes before the message comes god quickly settles issues like this because some of those issues are the things that distract people from listening while the word of god is coming someone is thinking how do i battle this issue how do i battle that issue Praise the name of the Lord. Hmm. Psalm 34 and verse 9. The mystery of divine intervention. I want to show you a very, very powerful Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 the mystery of divine intervention no matter who you are no matter your spiritual level your intellectual level you will get to a point in your life and your destiny listen carefully where there will be a need for a supernatural intervention in your life over the affairs of your destiny remember that what we receive every week here we are handed keys the assignment of keys is not only to open doors but to give you confidence that you cannot be limited the presence of keys suggests that you can no longer be confined and limited you can open the door at will and close the door at will revelations 3 7 and 8 right i'm he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the key of david please go back to verse 7 he of david he that openeth by reason of that key no man can shut and he that shut it and no man can open because of a key that you hold these revelations and these mysteries are keys that grant us grace to command victory the victory of christ and the finished work of christ will remain prophecy and only remain a potential the reality of it is activated on the strength of the light that we know and we understand thoroughly articulated and then empowered by the spirit of god when you receive that revelation the grace for performance also comes with the revelation you see how it works you're not going to receive a grace for a dimension when the understanding of that dimension is not yet fruitful in your life so the anointing of the holy spirit follows revelations the anointing for prosperity follows the revelation of prosperity the anointing for spiritual growth follows the revelation for spiritual growth if you want the anointing you must want the understanding that brings and preserves that anointing 
are we together exodus 3 and verse 8 let's get to work very quickly and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey and unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. I am come down to deliver them. Divine intervention is one of the mysteries that provides a system of advantage to believers. Now, as you know, our dominion in this kingdom is based on the light that we have but also based on the systems of advantage that we access no one is advantaged by default uh -uh. for as long as you are born here on earth doesn't matter if you come from a rich family you may have a financial advantage but that does not necessarily translate into a spiritual advantage are we together now through the revelation of god's word we begin to incorporate into our lives through the understanding of scripture systems of advantage favor mercy are we together speed relationships the anointing understanding wisdom so that you now begin to introduce these spiritual forces into your life and your destiny and in no time you will see that your life begins to reflect the image and the character of the christ in reality my little children he said of whom i travail until christ be formed in you he was speaking to believers those who were already saved but he was talking about the formation of christ it's one thing to potentially be a recipient of the life of god but the fullness and the riches of that life is released through understanding Ephesians 4 and verse 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart Psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you not some are children of the most high the next verse says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes bankruptcy of spiritual knowledge can even though you are saved you may never be able to walk in the fullness of those potentials an heir the bible says as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he's an heir but provided he's a child void of understanding void of spiritual intelligence he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all he's under tutors and governors so it takes light isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life are we blessed i'm saying all this so that the lord will by this teaching alongside others plant in us a hunger for exact spiritual growth this shadow boxing of trying principles here and there when we are confronted with issues most the average believer please look up listen to me the average believer does not know which key to apply when faced with challenges so as to command victory so the typical believer the typical church goer will begin to engage all kinds of things blood of jesus holy ghost fire communion offering and just shadow box them here and there in hope that one will walk and truly one will walk and the danger is because it did not come by mastery you will fear your result because you are sure that you cannot reproduce it again but paul said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he thrives lawfully there, there has to be a desperation and a passion in your heart i'm hungry for you 
hungry for you I have come to the table to eat I'm thirsty for you thirsty for you I have come to the waters to drink and now carry and not let you go that's just the part I wanted to sing for you to hear like Jacob Lord change my life not through superstition but through exact exegesis of truth let me not move around just saying i am a christian no results or results once a year not bringing glory to the name of the lord no and then not just succeeding in your spiritual life alone and abraham was old and well stricken in age and god had blessed him in all things don't sit down and justify mediocrity because you are doing well spiritually no you must embrace the entire counsel of god there is only one thing that is greater than the truth the whole truth the whole truth are we blessed divine intervention daniel chapter 3 let's study scripture Daniel chapter 3 Daniel chapter 3 my goodness God is changing someone's life Daniel 3 from verse 23 please very quickly Daniel 3 23 and these three Shadrach Meshach Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace follow carefully we are reading to 30 then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire follow carefully they answered and said unto the king true O king he answered and said lo i see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of god Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the most high God, come forth and they come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Uh -huh. And the princes, watch this, governors, captains, king's counselors, being gathered together, saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power there are men like that men whose bodies the fire had no power nor was an air out of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed upon them as a result 28 King Nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the God of Shadrach I don't know his name but I know those who represent him I will name him by their victory blessed be the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word a king's word can be changed though yes sir oh i vow you will not rise a king's word can be changed and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god 29 look at the victory that this brought to the name of the lord therefore i make a decree that every people nation language which speak anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego they shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Joshua Selman. Have you forgotten the Bible says this promise is unto you? And your children your children's children as many as are far off whom the lord shall call 
what is divine intervention write very quickly please we have a lot to do tonight and we have to rush divine intervention is said to occur when god steps in by god here we mean the god of the bible almighty el shaddai when god steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around divine intervention happens when god steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord don't forget to add that so when god steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me through the excellency of his wonder working power upon my life they glorified god in me john 15 verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples there are times in our lives in our families where we will require divine intervention because the help of man we will get to a point where the help of man can fail the bible is not careful as to the limitation of the help of men and the frailty of the energy of the flesh it says for by the arm of flesh the bible declares no man can prevail are we together why do we need inter divine intervention because satan and his cohorts listen carefully satan and his cohorts are determined to thwart the purposes of god in the life of the saints the bible lets us know that there is a real devil john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy look at it very carefully that means the thief has no business coming around a life until there is something to steal there is something to kill and there is something to destroy then the bible says i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly satan is determined to see that the purposes of god over the life of the saints individually and then corporately as a body that god's divine purposes are thwarted and so he does that listen carefully he does that by introducing negative circumstances to our spiritual work and then our destiny work in general so you begin your work of faith and either through wrong decisions on your own part through ignorance and so on and so forth for many of you who have listened to my teaching on the mystery of deliverance it's helped the body in no small way i teach there that there are three principal channels listen carefully there are three principal channels from scripture through which demons and satan attack and buffet the saints number one covenants 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 the legal system of the kingdom number two disobedience number three ignorance these are the only three ways from scripture anyone at all whoever faces any attack from satan anyone at all who becomes a victim of the assaults of satan one or more or all these channels were the doorways he used to access your life i repeat one covenants the strongest of them all two ignorance three disobedience hallelujah and so the devil will bring negative situations around our lives they can come through the ministry the negative ministry of men 
they can come by manipulating systems and structures look at jesus jesus came to the earth to become a portrait a pattern man to help men see and know god's intent number two he came as perfect theology correcting our ideas about god number three he came to fulfill that role of a mediator through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that men may be saved from his birth there was an attack there needed to be a divine intervention are we together now yes an innocent young virgin whose life was interrupted because a savior was about to be born that was not enough because of jesus they killed his age mates two years and below women cried because the devil was looking for a destiny to destroy the moment he announced that he was messiah people systems were orchestrated by the devil to fight him the religious leaders the political leaders the government of the day came into unity to fight him to a point where they were willing to release an armed robber someone who was already confirmed to be a nuisance to society let barabbas go but let this one be killed satan's determination to kill jesus was so high god had to incorporate it in the strategy for victory satan will leave no stone unturned to see to it that my destiny and your destiny if allowed becomes shredded in pieces listen just because you've given your heart to jesus christ and you are sincere and well-meaning does not mean the devil will leave you and say i'm aware there's the mark of the blood on you no no he left jesus for a season came back through peter came back through judas on the third day when jesus was going to arise they locked up the grave sealed it and there were men who were seated and the bible says the angel came with power rolled the stone and sat on it jesus resurrected he left and the men came together they said look um something is wrong let's come together and re they received money and lied that the disciples came and stole his body that's how determined satan is to make sure that destinies never go forward it is not strange and it did not start with you satan's antagonism towards us and our families did not start with us it is a vendetta that predates our coming it's been an ancient war anything that brings glory to the name of jesus anything that advances the purposes of god is satan's business invited or not so when they were dedicating you as they lifted you like jesus was lifted it's not only members that came for that child dedication the devil was also hearing let me hear what this priest will say about this oh lord this child called joshua selman i lift him up before you let him be a blessing to the nations and the devil said what did you say i had blessing now i'm interested not because of what else you said that means there is something about kingdom come in his life you become an intentional project listen carefully oh why don't they like me who did i offend all that statement is just a superstitious talk the condition listen the qualification for an attack is that you are born the moment you pass through the womb of a woman you are qualified enough for an attack then when he sees you giving your life to jesus i hope you know demons witness these things lord jesus i give you everything and they are watching and you are rolling on the ground rolling in the house of god and saying my heart is yours my life and my destiny they know satan was once in heaven he knows the implication of genuine surrender he knows you are making yourself usable and he says do you know what let's isolate this person and twat and rubbish the purposes of god in his life and can i tell you provided you are still wearing this mortal body somewhere in the equation of your life you will fall short of obedience somewhere in the equation of your life through ignorance there will be some level of access until you learn what you need to know you will be a victim of the ignorance of it so satan will catch into that moment 
this is why we need divine intervention it was a system of advantage that was programmed by god's wisdom so that if by any means through ignorance through wrong decisions it is on the strength of mysteries like this paul can say we know that all things even something that should make you fail there is still a provision in the economy of god where you can be delivered someone shout amen, amen. yes sir so when you say you are a christian you are not saying you are a follower of a religion whose founder is jesus no you are saying you are one who by the privilege of god's grace one you have been made a partaker of the life of god justified are we together in christ number two you are saying you are one who through spiritual understanding you have been surrounded with mysteries like chariots these are the forces that help you to walk in victory experientially these forces of the kingdom continue to cancel away every negative prophecy over your life let's see what that family will become they are right except that when you bring out one mystery one arsenal from that spiritual toolbox you can end something that was supposed to be so one of those mysteries in addition to the much you have received is called the mystery of divine intervention god did not leave us without his presence he did not leave us without his backing listen carefully there are three levels at which we encounter the power of god number one i need to say this before i begin to explain a few things number one the first level is a personal encounter where we meet god as a person an encounter that is the highest level you receive power from that level god directly number two there is a dimension of god's power that is programmed in principles you don't need to know him you don't need to believe him to experience that dimension of his power the moment you are compliant to and with the principle for instance you can be an assassin or an armed robber and still sow during the rainy season and your crops will grow is the dimension of god's power that sponsors that growth but it was programmed in principles you don't need a relationship nor an encounter to enjoy that dimension of his power this is the dimension that many unbelievers have tapped into business principles they have built systems structures they have built a very civilized society based on those principles even though they may not honor the god that powers that principle are we together so the first is a personal encounter with the god of the bible second is obedience and compliance to principles principles work because at the back of them there is an investment of a dimension of god's power and then the third way we receive power in this kingdom is through covenant alignment with men and women covenant alignment with men and women who god has trusted with certain graces direct encounter with god compliance and obedience to principles then covenant alignment with men and women i just needed to chip that in so that you'll understand what i'm about to explain are we together the mystery of divine encounters it is on the strength of these truths you access the power of god and you begin to walk in such level of victory one level and dimension of victory to the other one level of victory and you see by this your life shows in truth that the victory of christ over sin over death over satan was absolute and true creation is waiting for the richness of the manifestation of god's power and grace in and through your life to validate the reality of every claim that jesus made in and through his finished work that means i can become a poor representation of the victory of christ through the plethora of defeats that my life command my life can be so defeated it does not look attractive to be a christian i can misrepresent the purposes of god 
so every time i contend for superior dimensions of these mysteries it is to the end that we become empowered and then we become trophies if you would use that expression that men can look at our lives and say no it pays to subscribe to this government are we together in business we teach that the greatest way to market is to tell the truth there's no fear when you are telling the truth is that true when you package and you lie you are afraid of the truth being discovered so if we are marketing a god to our world we are marketing jesus christ and we are telling the world he is the way he is the truth and he is the life they will say we may not be able to see him but let's look at you who are seeing him and let's look at what he has done to you from the assessment of your victory the quality of your life it is safe for us to now conclude if this your jesus is a better alternative to the charm that i've been using if this your jesus is a better alternative to this god i'm serving nobody lives better for good nobody lives best for better so if we are selling a jesus to our world and letting them know that he is savior he is mighty the ancient of days we must be able to present him in a way and manner that dumbfounds principalities and powers it is on this strength the bible says ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent this is why he's blessed us so richly with all these mysteries to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church his bride his body the manifold wisdom of god are we together yes distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us as can now give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see do you know why we teach this we teach these truths number one because god loves us and he wants us to experience the highest level of victory that our obedience can afford us in this side of god's kingdom and in this side of eternity but number two we do these things because there is a world that is watching and they are depending on the testimony of god's grace upon our lives for the decision that affects their eternal destiny are we together have you seen marketers of products look up please there are a few people here some of you may be you know company owners and you have all kinds of products and services and look the level of training that goes in to teach the marketers because you are about to defend the image and the interest of a company you are marketing a product that probably expires after six months or after two years and look the skill that goes in make sure you're well suited make sure your communication is is very articulate make sure you smile whether you are tired or not look at all that skill we employ the people give them a salary motivate them and send them and even when they see their classmates or their loved ones or their brothers on the street they are not even as, they are so proud of what they are selling and yet the validity is just six months the validity is just two years but we are selling something here that has the eternal destiny of man listen carefully it is truly evil to refuse your life from commanding certain levels of results because by doing it you are the the destiny of millions are depending on your results so if you truly love god don't just say i love god you must contend for superior levels of results let your light so shine before men i need to put this in perspective because many times when they hear preachers talk like this um there is a spirit of religion that will usually want to fight 
people when they teach to empower people once it is not a talk about jesus and a direct talk about holiness and righteousness respectfully speaking a lot of people frown at it and they feel you are wasting people's time no we teach the whole counsel of god everything together they will weave themselves and add up to the revelation of the christ and the glorification of the same we have been marketing jesus wrongly that's why the world has been slapping that gospel back at our face we need to reinvent our strategy come up with power come up with results nobody runs away from what works are we together so i need to say this because there are many people who want to receive these truths but the spirit of religion can loom around people's hearts and not let them to be equipped and they go blindly with zeal that does not have knowledge oh i want to serve jesus and they die like chickens because they are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that keeps them in victory i believe in the whole counsel of god look the kind of bride that jesus is coming for come and i will show you the lamb's wife and he showed me a city equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth no exaggeration that is the lamb's wife that is the bride that he's coming for he's not coming for some lopsided bride there is no bride who does not adorn herself very well on the wedding day there is no bride who forgets her makeup forgets her shoe and just comes to stand no matter how much you're in a hurry if you want to present yourself as that bride get serious about every aspect of your spiritual life get serious about every aspect of your destiny if god tells you i want to use your resources to glorify jesus then ensure that those resources are to the degree that can command kings can i tell you this the arrogant world that we live in will depend on a high level of results for the kings of the land to hear you ordinary people can hear you no matter what you are saying but our target is not just the people we also need the kings because the kings have influence look what happened to Zacchaeus one encounter with Jesus saved many people who he had defrauded are we blessed these are principles of kingdom advance we have a series on that but for now it's important for you to submit to embrace the whole counsel of god there are demons there are arsenals of darkness hear me brothers and sisters they are going to come and attempt to attack your life but you need the truth of god's word the bible says write this down psalm 11 from verse 9 the b part proverbs 11 i meant to say from verse 9 the b part it says through knowledge shall the just be delivered through knowledge submitting to spiritual knowledge is indicating your interest to truly be delivered and to walk in victory so divine intervention is real it's a spiritual arsenal that must be part of our equipping as believers is part of the forces that make us mature and help us thrive and reign in life and tonight very quickly i'm going to give us four keys four keys that command divine intervention in the life of an individual in the life of a family use these keys and you will triumph bringing glory to the name of the lord bringing honor to the name of jesus christ are you ready key number one prayer key number one the first key that makes for divine intervention you want to see the power of god come to change negative circumstances over your life you want to see the power of god come to establish positive outcomes in your life to the end that jesus be revealed and be glorified the first key is prayer the priesthood ministry of prayer psalms 18 please give us the first six verses we'll do a few readings so please be patient psalm 18 from verse 1 to 6 i will love thee o lord my strength next verse the lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my god and my strength in whom i will trust my buckler the horn of my salvation my high tower we're reading to verse 6 and then i'll mention a few verses we'll just jump to them i will call upon the lord 
who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved from my enemies uh-huh the sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid verse 5 the sorrows of hell compassed me about and the snares of death prevented me verse 6 in my distress i called upon the lord and i cried unto my god and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears very quickly jump to verse 14 14 17 and then go to verse 40 for time's sake yea he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them verse 17 he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me go to verse 40 thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that i might destroy them that hate me next verse we are reading to 50 please quickly they cried but there was none to save them even unto the lord but he answered them not 42 then did i beat them small as the dust before the wind i did cast them out as the dirt in the streets uh-huh it says thou has delivered me from the strivings of the people and thou has made me the head of the hidden a people whom i have not known shall serve me 44 as soon as they hear of me they shall obey me and strangers shall submit themselves unto me we are reading to 50 the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places the lord leave it and blessed be my rock and let the god of my salvation be exalted it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me he delivered me from my enemies yea thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me thou hast delivered me from the violent man Two more verses therefore i will give thanks unto thee o lord among the hidden and sing praises unto your name verse 50 great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed to david and to his seed forevermore deliverance listen to me in my distress i cried he didn't just come i called him in prayer the ministry of prayer is very very powerful write this down for reference acts chapter 12 please from verse 5 is a popular scripture here to 11 this was peter when he was bound kept in prison here's what the bible says peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him as a result um herod now wanting people to come and kill him the next time and then verse 7 says that behold an angel of the lord in response to prayer came unto him a light shined in the prison he smote peter saying arise and his chains fell from his hands uh-huh and the angel said unto him guard thyself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me we we'll read down to 10 let's go to 10 very quickly the bible says when they were past the first and the second word or gate they came to the gate that led to the city which opened unto them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forth with the angel departed from him last verse the bible now says and when peter was come to himself he said now i know of a shorty that the lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of herod and from all the expectations of the people god does not just deliver you from men he delivers you from expectations are we together but that happens at the instance of prayer in acts chapter 16 when you read from verse 25 down to 34 the full text we may not read everything the bible talks about paul and silas are we together on account of a lady who they delivered who used divination to bring money for people 
and now one thing led to the other they were in the prison give it to us please acts chapter 16 from verse 25 here's what the bible says at midnight pay attention paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them 26 suddenly my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by please keep the scripture suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately how many doors financial doors health doors ministry doors business doors doors of your spiritual growth when it is a divine intervention it's not a few doors all doors open all doors open all doors open and everyone's band was loose 27 and the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled now follow the result of divine intervention but peter cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here uh-huh and he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling as a result of that divine intervention he fell down before paul and silas and brought them out and said sirs what must i do that is it to be saved that man's salvation was at the mercy of the result that intervention would bring every genuine intervention in the bible eventually led to the salvation of men and drew men close to jesus let's finish up he said believe on the lord jesus christ the one who now caused that intervention and thou shalt be saved and it will now affect your household and they spake unto him the word of the lord and to all that were in his house are you seeing now one divine intervention from the prison now the man is saved and his entire household and he took the same and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straight away last verse and when he had brought them into his house he set meat before them the same person who flogged them is now feeding them and rejoiced believing in god with all his house whoever you want to lift lord you can live through me whoever you want to bless lord you can bless through me whoever you want to save lord you can save the salvation of a man and his entire family not just depending on a crusade depending on someone's results but it came through prayer apostle james taught us in chapter 5 and verse 13 he says if any of you are afflicted let him pray the moment you sense that there is an affliction you came back home your children are sick your husband returns back and he says i don't know what is happening in the office you lost money in business everything gone they collected your land your property these are events that require divine intervention your first port of call is to begin to pray this is why god gave us the prayer language of tongues it's not a pentecostal issue the bible says we have a limitation the limitation is that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to but the holy spirit ah he knows oh he knows how to make intercession so i lock myself while i am praying my mind may be unfruitful but there is the intercessory ministry of the holy spirit 
prayer praying in the spirit but not just praying in the spirit word based prophetic declarations I'm showing you how to provoke intervention you cannot take the word of God out of the equation word based not superstitious prophetic declarations word based prophetic declarations two scriptures we're still talking on prayer Isaiah 43 and verse 26 believers learn this 43 26 Isaiah put me in remembrance he says let us plead together he says declare thou that thou mightest be justified my hand is able to save my hand is able to lift but I'm waiting for you to declare hmm. yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies anointing my head with fresh oil my cup runs over you are declaring I have no covenant with death in the name of Jesus I declare as for me and my house you are making declarations because you are seeing storms rising you don't keep quiet when storms rise the worst thing to do is to be silent hear me i'm speaking to you because there are people storms all around your life when they woke jesus christ he did not discuss with the storm peace be still your spiritual life suddenly your fire for prayer now your passion for the word down favor down everything down you should know that you are surrounded that there is something that is the time to open up your mouth i decree and declare in the name of jesus the lord is my light and salvation this is not just a pentecostal thing it's a formula for victory declare ye that thou mightest be justified oh i reject death i reject death in the name of jesus don't feel bad and feel that's how this one said it and died that's none of your business you speak you do your own part and declare over your destiny i choose life i said before you life and death i choose life i choose health i choose victory by the spirit of god thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side but none shall harm me with my eyes will i see the reward of the wicked i arise and shine because my light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon me gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising for my shame i receive double where i've been deserted so that no man help them please passes through me i become an eternal excellency a joy of many generations prayer listen please sit down the moment believers learn this world over the moment you see an unfavorable situation in your life you know it is the devil because along with that situation will come the spirit of depression and the assignment of depression is to keep you silent listen to what i'm telling you i'm not a medical doctor i'm speaking as a man of god i know that depression has an assignment to keep you silent satan is the master of the flesh realm so this is how my life will be i thought this will work i had a dream and i thought the job will come and you now keep quiet and the angels are saying look at this there is a law we are ready to move god is ready help them please god is ready to move Psalms 107 verse 2 These are the arsenals of victory Psalms 107 Please very quickly Let the redeemed of the Lord If they are truly the redeemed Don't just think so Don't just wish so Say so Let the lifted of the Lord Say so Let the blessed of the Lord Say so Are you learning now? 
you return back and there is a medical report that is disturbing just when that is happening your child brings a result after spending so much on his school fees you see an evil report are we together the moment that is happening you just hear that your investment has crashed you're a politician they told you okay this is supposed to be your position you're a man of god you come to church and it looks like everything is going down that's not the time to be quiet and that's not the time to attract sympathy you are the first prophet of your destiny go and shut your door remove your ceo regalia put on that priestly robe shake up arakatosia someone blast in the spirit in one minute I would be silent in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, listen. Believers, hear me. Hold on, hold on. Do you know that many believers allow tragedy to mount until it presses them down? That's when they resort to God as a last option. And I will not be silent. I Listen, an evil report is happening. Your children are going haywire. As the man, you are not just the head of the home for nothing. Wear your priestly regalia while your children are sleeping. Walk room by room. You are laying hands upon them, not my house. I build the spiritual fortification by prophesying. I decree and declare the foolishness of faith. I engage it. The righteousness of faith speaks from this wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I will help you. Come and meet me tomorrow. And you come tomorrow and say, well, Who asked you to come here? This favor. Just when you are going, your car hit someone. Just when you learn to read the signs. Don't wait for evil to stay. Don't bear long with evil. Attack it from infancy. Don't bear long with evil. Attack it from infancy. Yes. Hallelujah. You go to bed in the night and you have a funny dream that you know already shows that there is an attack. That the spirit of death is following people in your family. Listen, don't just wake up and write it in a jotter. And, and then when it happens, you say, no, get up and say, no way. In the name of Jesus, I, if he followed my father and my father's father, I call as a priest. I'm a king and a priest. What this declaration? Listen, it was, it was God's servant, Bishop David Oyedeko, who said, no matter how mad a man is he will not enter inside fire by mistake and say it's confusion no matter how mad he is when he sees fire he says he makes his angels wings and his ministers flaming fire you're sleeping and someone takes your name to a shrine for political reasons oh let this person die or let this person not win you don't have to go to the shrine right from where you are listen 
listen believers hear me this is not just some spiritual jamboree the times that we live in it will be risky to not know these truths and to not engage them your life literally hangs upon these truths let the redeemed of the lord say so please sit down please sit down let me challenge you i want to challenge every family here as much as god grants grace provided you and your wife are in agreement set one day this week even if it's for 30 minutes hold your hands walk around that house identify anything that does not look like christ zoom your tongues to it scatter it as if it does not exist yes sir yes sir no my womb will not give birth to armed robbers as a woman you lay your hands or sit down and watch things go bad just help those under the anointing there is a strong anointing in this place because this is a message for the body of Christ divine intervention comes on the wings of prayer a prayerless church no matter what else you have is a powerless church a wordless church no matter what you have is a powerless church the ministry of prayer and the word are the foundations of the true church listen to me I'm not creating a doctrine out of this but let me challenge you obtain grace from God to wake up in the night conquer slumber the night time is when kings win is when we establish victories you're walking around your house in the night the Lord told you you will be a senator the Lord told you you'll be a governor the Lord told you you'll be a CEO and there are forces sitting down making decrees you don't need to fight them go to your closet this is how kings reign people of God hear me with every sense of humility that's how we got here I'm not telling you cunningly devised fables everything about your finances is dying scattering you are not lazy you are hard-working they are stealing from your shop they are cheating you they are lying counseling is not the solution alone go back and pray there is an evil force wanting to discredit God in my life I attack you in the name of Jesus listen I don't promote the devil and I don't mean to market the devil but I have seen many demons I have seen many spirits by the privilege of my calling and the apostolic office I have been exposed to the realm of the spirit I understand scripture I have been well mentored by fathers of faith and veterans of the gospel the things you are hearing are not cunningly devised fables don't ignore it you will spend your lifetime paying the price we live in an evil world your portion will come to you by insisting from the days of john until now the kingdom suffered violence it is a violence that will take it by force can i tell you this there is no african family that is immune to witchcraft by default it's a lie if not by bloodline by territorial connection when we pray like this we do not negate the finished work of christ we rather stand in partnership our prayer is our participatory role to establish it here and now listen as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of men he didn't say sin i cast you out there are rules of engagement in the spirit as for me i've made up my mind 
God gave me this mouth not only to eat but to create my destiny and I insist for my life for this ministry silence is not just shouting and jumping around no 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 an intentional approach to your growth take responsibility listen body of Christ thank God for the vessels God has given us but we must become serious and mature to become the first prophets of our destiny go and lock your door pray for me pray for me is good but you must take authority over your situation by the power of the Holy Ghost the mystery of divine intervention give this message to anyone you know and you love please sit down the first key is prayer for as long as I live I will never stop praying for as long as God has anointed me I will never stop praying for as long as this ministry God grants me the privilege of leading this ministry we will never stop praying for as long as I live I will never ignore the Word of God no matter where whatever lifts you is what sustains you don't throw it away don't throw this Bible for money don't throw this Bible for awards hold it together with the awards this is it the alternative to this is charms and witchcraft and all kinds of troubles that come with side effects I found your word and I did eat it it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul heaven and earth will pass away but the word of the Lord abides forever please hear me the only guarantee to our fulfilling the purposes of God as we await the return of Christ with honor is to get serious with this scripture please hear me you are seated here and there is an attack on your spiritual life take it seriously don't just say one day i'll think about it i am telling you now if you have been praying to confirm whether it's an attack i'm answering that prayer by the grace of god it's an attack i hope you still love me this night please pray please pray P pray for me is good but pray in the name of jesus christ and when you are praying i'm not being harsh on you i'm just shouting because of the passion burning in me listen by the grace of god don't be praying and browsing except if the holy ghost speaks to you and you are looking for scriptures quickly keep this thing aside this thing is a blessing but in the name of jesus christ show your dominion over it by keeping it on one side when you are praying you can't be doing too many things and focus lock the door sometimes sincere people can come to distract your prayer and study life how are you are you at home peace be unto this as politely tell them sorry i love you but i'm spending a few minutes if they love you and they love your destiny they should excuse you look live by values otherwise you will crash your spiritual life down you are praying with fasting Turn every plate upside down in your house. Lord, there is a spirit attacking my influence. There is a spirit attacking my fervency for you. It didn't used to be like this. What happened to my prayer fire? What happened to my word fire? I sleep by 7 p.m. I wake up by 9 a.m. in the morning. Something is wrong with my spiritual life. depression speak i reject it ah i know i lost one billion in this investment my company is in trouble i know that this has happened i know they diagnosed me with fibroid or cancer or whatever i know that there is a situation things don't seem to be adding up but let me die believing you you return back you study scripture and now the advantage we have there are many people who have gone through the labor of putting the required scripture you need just a little search online and you can find scriptures people have paid the price already if you have an office or a prayer room surround it with powerful scriptures remove pictures of when you were small and keep them aside and put scriptures 
while you are praying you turn this light firing from one direction please listen to what i'm telling you this is the key to victory do you know why i'm telling you this so that when you rise when they ask you yes you will say it's god's grace but you won't tell light you can't say i don't know what i did Jesus I know Paul I know you must register your presence in the realm of the spirit as a touch not for me for my children for all that surrounds me touch not Do you know prayer can become a habit you are praying and you just stretch for stretching for two minutes and waking up you are not fully awake but the realm of the spirit and demons will suffer just because you are before you turn back is any man afflicted let him pray can i tell you this i don't mean i don't mean to create controversy or trouble i've come to this city in peace but let me tell you this I made up my mind everybody under my roof must serve my god listen carefully you can't be under my roof at my cost and do what you want to do no no if the owner of the house is praying you should pray don't get up and say whatever no it's a it's a, it's a personal uh, um, revelation i'm not saying it must be so for you so that you don't allow people to bring all kinds of familiar spirits and loiter your house okay this is how we pray in this house you are welcome 5 a.m or 6 a.m with it's a diff if there are special cases that's all right but as much as possible the point of neglect is the access point for demons where you neglect the point of neglect many of us started raising our children well but when they became teenagers in a bid to honor them for maturity we started subtracting spiritual values you take away prayer and give your child a car you did not help the child let him pick the prayer before the car key i don't know how i got here please sit down let's let's talk about we have to finish so number one prayer please pray 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 in the spirit pray in the spirit we do not know the evil that confronts us day and night but we can pray it's our zone of safety is the formula that the father gave us pray the moment you detect things around your life that are not lining up with the purposes of god the moment you see that the agenda of god is being interrupted souls are not being saved in and through your life you are a man of god and for two weeks you made an altar call nobody came out don't laugh and say it's all right everybody is saved that's not there is no such thing as that the same way the poor you will always have with you the unsaved you will always have with you the day i spend a week in my life and my life does not save a sinner i will go on a retreat and repent before god what is the anointing for one week sunday to sunday nobody came to jesus through my life ah. nobody got healed through my life no demon was casted out nobody understood the kingdom through my life you must take that responsibility authority comes with responsibility number two very quickly the second key that provokes divine intervention in the life of believers is praise with understanding praise as an instrument of warfare praise with understanding as a weapon three scriptures very quickly psalm 67 from verse 5 god is helping us tonight help us media let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee we're reading to verse 7 then let the earth yield her increase and god even our own god shall bless us uh-huh 
it says God shall bless us and all the earth shall fear him at the instance of praise it was a few years ago God gave me I don't like dancing you would have noticed I'm dancing and all of this there's no grace for me there Bible says every man should abide in his calling but not when not when I am alone with God you don't dance because you can dance you dance because it's a weapon we praise I learned the power of praise praise works wonders Psalm 22 verse 3 Psalm 22 verse 3 but thou art holy O thou that inhabitest you make praise your habitation that everywhere there is genuine praise it attracts the attention of God how many of you know that if you want to invite the commissioners in a state you want to invite the permanent secretaries maybe the attorney generals and the rest instead of inviting all those people one by one invite the governor in his capacity as the governor as he's coming the entourage that comes with him somebody who told you yesterday he won't come on hearing that his boss is coming in the capacity the full capacity of his office that's what praise does there are many things you don't know you need breakthrough lifting favor let praise go up let praises rise from the inside from the inside may you Psalms 18 verse 3 where we read earlier said I will call upon the Lord who is worthy or deserving of praise by that formula of prayer mixed with praise so shall I be saved that every time I pray it does not just stop at prayer many times when we pray angels come but Paul and Silas taught us that if we want God directly when you are done praying begin to praise and he comes himself are we blessed have a selection of powerful worship and praise songs every television in your house you have a flash drive behind it with a special selection per season per moment when it looks like you are downcasted oh apostle I can't sing people have sung for you already get their songs and while they are singing you repeat after them the parts you don't know don't worry God understands jump to a part that you know and sing yes sir let me show you something judges judges chapter 1 from verse 2 we have to hurry up we're about to pray judges 1 from verse 2 look up please they were going to battle and the Lord said Judah shall go up first that judah judah means praise because i have delivered the land it is praise that will take delivery watch this verse 3 hmm. and judah said to simeon you know what simeon is simeon comes from the hebrew word hear or to hear that's faith that comes by hearing so praise told faith come and escort me i need to receive something he says come with me into my lot that we may fight against the canaanites praise calls faith let me do this with understanding and likewise i will go with you into your lot and faith went with praise as a result verse 4 and judah went up and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands and they slew them in Bezek, 10,000 of them. Do not downplay what praise can do. Perfected praise with understanding. Write your prayer requests, the issues of concern on the ground. Put a worship song, roll before God there get up and begin to dance and dance papa hagin met bishop oyedepo and he said we mentored you on faith 
and yet God has brought you great increase. How did this happen? And Bishop Oedipo replied him and said, By the grace of God, sir, I danced everyone into this tabernacle that you see. When you pray, then you praise. Praise is powerful. Let, it, let the praise of God not go away from your mouth. Sing praises with understanding. Sing praises with understanding. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Raise a song when you go back home. You wake up in the night and you are walking around. And you are carrying the letter. They just sat you. Present it to God. Drop it on the ground there. Dance before him. Africans, we do that a lot. Those in the West don't see much of that. But Africans, you know what happens during weddings? There are this group of people who can wear their uniform and have these talking drums. It happens in most cultures, especially the Yoruba culture. They see you and they begin to call your name and praise you. You don't want to give them money. They call your name and say something about you again. <laughs> Senator, remember the building you did. You want to enter the car. They remind you. You made a statement that you love all of us. And they put pressure on your integrity. And before you know it, you will reach down. Unplanned. Listen. A woman's dance removed the prophet's head. As prophetic as he was. Herodias danced her way to a decision and option that was given to her and my evil mother told her to remove the head of John the Baptist I can tell you because I've done it myself there are miracles you go and try what I'm telling you and see not showmanship no lock yourself you and your maker cry and roll before him lord i bring before you my political career i bring before you my spiritual life i bring before you this need and begin to pray and roll write the name of your business write the issues of concern write the issues that is plaguing your spiritual life what kind of believer am i oh god you said we'll dream dreams i don't have any dreams and if i have a dream it's a demonic dream write it down pray and see what will happen that night praise number three the third key that provokes divine intervention is sacrifice sacrifice very powerful sacrifice seed faith is very powerful seed faith is not just about money pay attention Psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me 50 and verse 5 psalm they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice let me tell you this ask any great man whether in the secular or in the kingdom there are certain heights and certain results you can never command under the sun until sacrifice comes from you when you read psalms 126 from verse 1 to 6 it says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream jump to verse 5 please verse 5 says they that sow in tears there is a kind of seed you don't laugh that's when you are giving isaac if it's ishmael you can laugh but when you are giving Isaac, you know this is Isaac. You sow in tears. It says you shall reap in joy. Verse 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Now let me confess and admit to you that I know that the issue of seed has gone through all versions and all kinds of of imbalances and abuses here and there i know i know that people have been victims of all kinds of manipulations with the teaching on seed but just because a truth is exaggerated or misused does not mean it is not truth when truth is applied within the boundary of scripture and in truth and righteousness it works wonders you've heard me share my story for many of you who have listened to my teachings 
I remember a time when God needed to shift me. I was already in ministry and God was already helping me. I remember when God gave me an instruction that one day he was going to speak to me to carry a seed and take it to God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko. I wouldn't tell you the seed. And that morning, God gave me that instruction. I got up, got the available flight and went down cut the long story short when i was done with everything i had to do as i came out to enter the car so i'll go and look for somewhere to rest and return the next day the holy spirit told me to place my hand on the ground there at canaan land ground when i placed my hand he said son from today you have entered the overflow anointing not everybody will be honest to tell you the story behind their glory but please don't be mistaken behind every glory you see there is a story and there is a mystery behind that story sacrifice read the bible about kings who slew their children and an indignation rose against them and war ended sacrifice when done with understanding is powerful I have made sacrifices this ministry has made sacrifices you cannot imagine and I do it with joy and with understanding let me tell you what happens to your seed when you sacrifice first Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 35 we don't have time but let me see if i can touch a bit on it please understand this mystery so that your sacrifice will become profitable many give in the body they just give just because a man of god challenged them to give sincerely so but in this kingdom results are governed by the understanding that sponsors that action if you just act without understanding if you really get a result it's just the mercy of god but some will say how are the dead raised up so he's talking about resurrection please pay attention and with what body do they come paul insulted them i will insult you that which thou sowest is not quickened except it dies follow carefully so there is a relationship now between resurrection and death are we together next verse please let's save time media help us please next verse but god giveth it a body as it pleased him and to every seed its own body hmm. all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men there is another flesh of beasts and of fishes and of birds uh-huh there is also a celestial body and a terrestrial body but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another uh -huh. two or three more verses there is one glory of the sun and another of the moon the glory of the stars and one different from another pay attention their glories are not the same we'll stop at 43 he said so also is the resurrection of the dead it is a dead bodies the dead you sow it in corruption but it is raised in incorruption last verse it is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness and it is raised in power this is a mystery one time i was spending time with the lord and the word of the lord came to me and gave me a mystery behind sacrifice the bible says our seeds have the power to die and have the power to come back to life only jesus demonstrated that the ability to die and come back to life that means it is possible that i can tie any season i do not like to my seed and as i sow that seed if that seed dies everything connected to it must die are you getting the point now i can take the season of disfavor i can take the season of shame and tie it to my seed with understanding and sow that seed when that seed dies that season also dies 
and the bible says there is a unique expression of the law of seed faith and sacrifice in this sense because when you sow you don't only reap more of what you sowed you can change what you want to see still by sowing you can sow favor and reap more favor but you can sow shame and exchange it for honor that means i can take all the unfavorable seasons in my life ministry business career and by faith you drop it and expect that season to die and all of a sudden a new season begins to open as your seed grows it's a powerful mystery you see why it's dangerous to steal money in the house of god because you don't know what season someone is trying to kill and if you do not allow that seed die you thought you just stole 10 naira look at gehazi you now see what happened to gehazi he thought he was just collecting money he was collecting leprosy just because the leprosy left naman did not mean it left the earth he was still there waiting for a volunteer and a man's greed pushed him i have ended seasons in my life ended cycles in my life ended patterns in my life by the power of sacrifice with understanding it's a practice that i will continue to do for as long as i live discernment again you've heard my story that i was in just many years ago and i went to buy sugar cane and i saw two women it was not much old women and i pleaded with them that let me i just wanted to honor them they were mothers i said please let me pay for them they also wanted to buy it they were beckoning on me trying to remove their money from their wrappers i said please let me pay for you and then i paid for them and the women began to bless me quite honestly i didn't hear what they said but one of them looked at me and said my son forever walk upon gold sacrifice works when it is done with understanding many of us have not risen to a new level because we are not ready those who are unbelievers call them they will tell you they know whether you are born again or not meet great people christians or non-christians they will admit to you that there must be a sacrifice dimension in the equation of your success when you see a man rise beyond the threshold know that there was sacrifice there whether it is a demonic sacrifice or it is a godly sacrifice i assure you no man can rise beyond a threshold just like that look at the father when the father wanted many sons in glory he carried his own son jesus his own son the father did not say i stand as the holy one seated upon an ancient throne be free from sin even when jesus turned to him and said eloi eloi lamak sabachthani father this eternal relationship that has never been severed he said for the sake of the harvest that is coming i want to end the reign and the dominion of sin and not even your face will make me change my mind sacrifice you know why abraham is called the father of all nations we sing and jump abraham's blessings are mine he said if you are abraham you will do the works of abraham abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest imagine a man dragging his son abraham where are you going i'll see you in the evening and the son says father where are we going he says, just follow me obedience is better than sacrifice and he's carrying him up the son says i see the wood i see the fire where is the lamb and he said jehovah jireh do you know what it meant for abraham to lay his son and the child will be saying father what did i do if i sinned against you won't you tell me to say sorry abraham imagine what you would go back and tell the journalists imagine what you would go back and tell the pressmen imagine his marriage was it was obviously going to end what would he tell sarah your 25 year old project all the mockery and the shame because a spirit spoke to you 
let me tell you what made God to swear a blessing on Abraham and God was watching Romans chapter 4 there's no time but when you read there it tells you the contemplations of Abraham that Abraham had planned that when he kills Isaac he would beg God to bring him back so that he would take him back to the mother and give him in peace I've obeyed you now please save me from the trouble that is waiting for me at home sacrifice there are times that your seed will have to be the weapon that ends certain yokes in your life there are times not emotional things with understanding lord i'm tired of this level i am tired of this level of grace i'm tired of this level of oil i'm tired of this level of growth i'm tired of this level of hearing you sacrifice he says let no man trouble me for i bear in my body the mark there is a mark there are people who are recognized both by the realm of the spirit and this realm i've had the privilege and i don't mean to insult your pedigree forgive me if i sound arrogant this call upon my life has exposed me to many successful people I've had the honor and the privilege of praying with many people and every time I meet great people I don't just talk as a man of God I like to listen to their stories what happened and I'm listening sometimes they are laughing I'm not I'm not I'm not interested in all the somewhere in the story there will be a punchline and then I did this and then God gave me an instruction I did this it may not all be money There was a time many years ago that God gave me an instruction. I prayed for 72 hours non-stop. My eyes did not see the sun. I didn't know whether it was morning or night. I did not check my time. Don't trivialize 72 hours. Even if this is what you are doing for 72 hours, it is a lot of work. 72 hours. Because we needed to end some seasons and step into certain seasons. I was teaching the school of ministry student yesterday we we're discussing the anointing <clears throat> and i was telling them that when you have a little extension wire connected you can hold the extension wire with your hand and even if there is a spark it will not be serious but when you see a high tension cable there are people who held it and remained there till they dried up that's how men can become you can become an extension wire that has little or nothing coming from it or you can become a high tension cable in the spirit the difference sacrifice you don't just look at people and say be healed it's not everything that is a gift there are things that are rewards you will have to stay with the spirit sacrifice of prayer sacrifice of the word the discipline and the constraints i don't want to sound arrogant to begin to tell you the things that i have done for this kingdom but brothers and sisters hear me many of you are in need of interventions there are some of you following online you want to break circles you want to break patterns god is speaking to you not without a sacrifice it is true sacrifice the prophets of Baal, remember at Mount Carmel, the last card that they used to bring Baal down was sacrifice. Elijah said, I give you morning till evening. Do whatever you know to do to invite him. They tried everything. They started by prayer. They danced around. Remember, nothing happened. When evening was coming, they say there's something we know about the realm of the spirit. If Baal will not wake up to our prayer, if he will not wake up to our singing, give us a knife. And the Bible says they started cutting themselves. Have you seen traditionalists do these things? They make incisions because they want to invoke powers. They cut themselves like animals. And Elijah said, your God is sleeping. When it was now time, Elijah said, get out of the way. The time for the evening sacrifice. That was the time Elijah called God. He didn't just stand and say, God, come. <clears throat> 
he waited till it was the time of the evening sacrifice and he said bring these bullocks for me he set on an altar put sacrifice there poured water and called upon the god who answers by fire and fire came from heaven licked everything when your life becomes an offering and a sacrifice then you walk in signs and wonders then god will give you a grace and an anointing not just for a church not just for a city but for nations i tell you the truth anybody who loves you sincerely will not lie to you not everything is just free that you pick up on the ground there in jesus name there are sacrifices that follow certain graces graces and anointings and possibilities are in levels there are graces for regions there are graces for nations there are graces for continents all of them come by sacrifice can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism the last key and then we pray has god blessed us tonight so number one the prayer ministry of the believer two praise three sacrifice for the prophetic the fourth key that provokes divine intervention is the power of prophecy isaiah 42 and verse 22 please get ready to pray isaiah 42 and verse 22 and this is a people robbed and spoiled they are all of them snared in holes they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and none delivereth they are for a spoil and none sayeth restore the prophetic was given as a spiritual advantage to help believers rise and ultimately advance the purposes of god the bible says in hosea chapter 12 you read from verse 11 down to 13 hosea chapter 12 11 to 13 let's go to verse 12 very quickly jacob fled into the country of syria israel served for a wife and for a wife he kept the sheep 13 and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt it was the lord that brought them but he used a prophet and by a prophet was he preserved by a prophet the prophetic ministry is powerful don't mind the imbalances here we're all students in the school of the spirit growing but if you ignore the prophetic there is a limitation to the dimension that you can rise in life when jesus christ was born as the logos of god there were two people who spoke to him one was a priest called simeon another was a prophetess called anna there is a reason why they spoke when jesus was about to begin his ministry there was a prophet called john you call him the baptist he was the prophet at every major season in his life there were prophetic voices that spoke to him prophecy is powerful it reveals and it creates the revelatory dimension of prophetic strengthens your faith it gives you hope it gives you direction but the most superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic where it makes what has no business happening to happen by this time tomorrow he said are we together for time's sake i'll stop here we're going to pray the mystery of divine intervention the lord needs to arise over families the lord needs to arise over individuals there are many of you who came here bleeding and crying and saying god please speak to my situation i'm tired of this situation god has brought you a word tonight it is a spiritual arsenal that you must add and teach believers around you that as we sojourn in this our faith work we will meet with circumstances that defy science circumstances that defy intellect we will need to outsource help from a realm that is beyond the three-dimensional realm at that point you will need divine intervention please rise up on your feet two prayer points for tonight and then we're done prayer point number one father 
arise arise and wipe my tears arise and take away shame and reproach from my life please pray with understanding please rise up and pray please pray lord arise arise in the name of jesus christ over my spiritual life over my finances over my destiny arise in the name of jesus christ over my family lord arise over this issue of concern please pray outside pray online make sure you are praying arise so called and let your enemies be Hallelujah. Second prayer point we are going to obtain grace. The Bible says, Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. It is not just knowledge, but it is doing at the point of action. That's when the integrity of God is committed. You are going to obtain grace. Grace for prayer. Grace for praise. Grace for sacrifice. Grace to honor and receive the prophet. Lift your voice, please, and pray. Obtain grace from heaven. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Someone is praying. Someone is obtaining grace. Lord, grace to be on fire. As far as my prayer life is concerned, as far as my work body life is concerned, in the name of Jesus, grace to offer the sacrifice of praise as an instance of worship and as an instrument of deliverance and victory. The power to lay down, the power to lay down, the power to bury seasons, the power to end negative seasons in my life, in my family, in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, I open up my spirit to the ministry of the prophetic. Let it shift me. I open up my spirit to the creative and the revelatory direction of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please listen to me. Don't be in a hurry to leave. I want to speak over your life. Prophecy is very powerful. I am a product of prophecy. When a prophetic word, truly by God, comes your way in one moment, one moment, a prophet said, by this time tomorrow, when he said so, another man who the king leans on, said even if god opens the window of heaven might this happen he saw it but he did not step into it the bible says despise not prophesyings we are made by the word we are made by prophecy we didn't make ourselves there were voices that became prophetic ladders for us to climb to where we are and god has granted us such measure of grace to also lift others please listen to me every word you are going to be hearing I want you to believe i want you to receive you don't have to kneel down let your heart be opened truly don't just say amen before i make that prophetic declaration very quickly we have one minute for you if you are here and you are saying apostle on hearing you speak the holy ghost began to convict me to make my ways right with jesus there's no point wasting time. I know that I need Jesus. I'm tired of running my life at my own terms. I need to make it right with Jesus. Maybe a family, maybe a young person, maybe an old person, all alike, following from Zaria, all across the world, here in Abuja, 
aside from those outside and the various overflows you can come in front of your projector screen very quickly i want to give you one minute wherever you are take that bold step come and stand before me here very quickly let's honor them as they do so quickly don't wait for someone to come be the first summon that courage and come please come come very quickly very quickly come you're all i want keep clapping you're all I've ever come to jesus you're all The Lord is calling people. Win that war tonight. Outside, online, all over the nations. We bring you Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. The deliverer, the mighty one. Keep coming. God bless you. Help me know you. salute all of you who are here standing before me all who are watching by television from the screen or wherever I want to pray for you thank you for coming you are worth our sacrifice you are worth our time of stay here we do this because we love Jesus please if you can lift your right hand let it be from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem and you who is following online by television you're following on the internet I want you to pay attention make this decision wherever you are let jesus know that you mean business with him say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe that you are the son of god tonight i make you my savior my lord my king i declare that the power of sin satan and the grave is broken from my life from today i am a recipient of the life of god i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign i go forward ever and backward never amen father thank you for these ones i stretch my hands towards them and i pray according to scripture and by the authority of the word i declare their sins forgiven I declare that they are partakers of this life in the name of Jesus they have become members of this great fold and I pray in Jesus name that the grace that lifts may that grace lift them the power to walk in victory let it be released upon you you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus thank you for making this great decision now I'd like you to follow the gentleman there's a gentleman holding a placard all of you you'll see a gentleman holding a placard to your right or to your left please follow them very quickly they'll just have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat very very quickly let's celebrate them one more time as we prepare to receive the prophetic word hallelujah are you ready to receive we have been commanded to bless balaam said we've been commanded to bless in the name of jesus every pit you have found yourself in tonight i stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and i speak to you no matter how deep that pit is come out of it now come out of it now come out of it now every negative situation surrounding your life your family your career in the name of jesus my god and your god my king and your king my deliverer and your deliverer i decree and declare over your life be free from that yoke now be free from that yoke now I stand upon the grace that God has given me 
and the grace of all our fathers of faith that we have so partaken of by God's grace and from this corporate anointing I speak to you every door that has refused to open over your destiny we speak to that door be open now whatever has affected your passion for God your prayer life your word study life in the name that is above all names fresh fire from the throne let it land on you now number two anyone praying and anticipating your downfall so that they will rejoice and say we said it in the name of jesus christ shame and reproach will be their portion forever Can I pray for you? He said, Master, we have toiled all night. He said, Nevertheless, everywhere you have tried and tried and failed, I call upon the God of heaven, who is the helper and the lifter of men. Go back and succeed. Go back and succeed. Spiritually, go back and succeed. Financially, go back and succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare, if there is anything connected to bloodline, connected to foundations, connected to ancestry, connected to territory, holding you back, I will not release you to go. I cut that chain right now forever. I prophesy to you, be blessed in the name of Jesus. I declare, you will rise to a position of influence that will surprise you access to systems and structures in the name of jesus christ hear me believers anyone who fights you goes down instantly and everyone who needs to be used by god in this season as an instrument of deliverance to bail you out of any kind of shame and reproach in the name of jesus i call forth their ministry over your life enjoy the ministry of angels enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of angels enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of angels enjoy the ministry of men in the name of jesus by this time next week you will stand here and testify of the wonder working power of god go back to a realm of deliverance a realm of lifting a realm of fire command results command results supernatural results in the name of jesus christ Every veil covering your glory so that you are just moving. I tear that veil in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that has closed scripture towards you so that even though you are opening your Bible, you are not seeing anything. I declare, let the scrolls be opened. Let the scrolls be unlocked. Let the book be opened in the name of Jesus every spiritual laziness trying to destroy your life so that you become a victim of the onslaught in this season in the name of jesus i declare those spirits are far from you and let me prophesy upon you the spirit of death whether by accident whether by sickness whether by plane crash whether by the activities of wicked men whether by enchantments and evil incantations may it be far from your habitation everything that you have seen in your visions you know it has been released from heaven but for whatever reason your hands has not held it i stand by prophecy in partnership with the holy ghost i push it to your hands i push it to your hands i push it to your hands in the name of jesus christ
please wave your hands in one minute and give Jesus praise. Father, we honor you. Father, we honor you. Give him praise. Wave your hands. Let it be a wave offering. Lord, I wave because I believe you. You have done it and I give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord will change your life in a remarkable way this night. In the name of Jesus. And please sit down and be ready to write and listen. God wants to speak to us seriously this night. Hallelujah. God wants to speak to us seriously tonight. I truly believe that tonight's meeting is a destiny encounter. But every meeting is a destiny encounter but particularly tonight my heart is heavy to just offload a lot of very serious things this night hallelujah i love it when god puts it in my heart to challenge our lives and our destinies tonight's talk is a very serious talk and i want you to pay attention don't just write listen and receive amen someone is changing this night Take me into the holy of holies Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holies Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am Take me into the holy of holies Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holies Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am would you take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Spirit of the living God, speak to your people. You have instructed this meeting and you have brought a word tonight. Someone's destiny is dependent on this word. There are people following online. There are people listening there are thousands and millions more that will listen after tonight I pray oh God that you will put your anointing and your grace upon this teaching may it not be trivialized oh God I pray that you activate destinies in a strange way tonight in the name of Jesus answer the questions that are in the hearts of your people release the anointings that they desire for the next level of their lives Lord we thank you for people here who are sick oppressed who are here just trusting you for a touch some do not even know what the name of their issues are but i pray that they will receive a touch from god tonight in the name of jesus christ god bless you ecclesiastes 10 15 ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 jesus we bless you It's always a pleasure to bring God's word and every time the word of God comes it comes not just to challenge us but to change us if you are not changed by the word listen if the word of God cannot change you then nothing else can change you are we together because the word of God created the heavens and the earth praise the Lord Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15 read it slowly read it intelligently read it with understanding one to read ah no 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 slowly doesn't mean quietly one to read he never said the labor of the foolish whereas some of them would have found out why some escaped but he says the labor of the foolish 
the problem is not the labor the problem is those who are laboring there is a condition the bible says the labor of the foolish does what weary it every one of them why because he knoweth not that's what makes him foolish because he does not know how to go to the city there is a way to go to the city there is a formula to go to the city listen please there is a system that can take a man from where he is to his place in destiny and the bible says the foolish and the wise do the same thing seemingly they are all laboring but then the bible says it wearied every one of them and this is why it worries them it says they do not know how it did say they do not know the name of the city they know what they want they know where they want to go to but the system the system to take them from where they are to where they need to be you know i've said it again and again that believers are not confused as to the outcome of their lives what they want we all know what we want or at least we have an idea the challenge usually is the understanding of what it will take to leave us from where we are to where we need to be and i pray that god will open our eyes in the name of jesus write this word down destiny write this word down destiny destiny the word destiny is a very interesting word there's almost no man of god who has not spoken about this word we love it so much we dream about it we discuss it but the bible says listen please that there is a path listen there is a path that seemeth right but then it says the end thereof are the ways of death are we together now the word destiny simply means your predefined place of fulfillment write it down please i'll give you a few definitions quickly your predefined place of fulfillment predefined means that you do not guess in the loins of prophecy and in the loins of time there is a place allocated for you please listen there is a place in destiny there is a place in prophecy allocated for each and every one of us and your fulfillment and your relevance in life is tied to not only your discovery but your arrival you there is a condition there is a place where you must arrive to be able to find the joy and the fulfillment of living is called destiny the second definition of destiny is the place where your assignment finds full expression your destiny represents the place where your assignment your purpose on earth your reason for living your destiny represents the place where you can say experientially that i am living the reason for which i am born i am making impact number three i went ahead of myself the third definition of destiny is the place of notable and consistent impact the place of notable and consistent impact no longer the place of desire no longer the place of ambition that you have gotten to a place where your impact is notable your impact is significant the last definition of the word destiny destiny also represents a place where you have earned the right to transform lives and to watch those lives transform others not just that you are transforming lives 
you are fulfilling destiny to the extent to which you have earned the right to transform lives and you have the privilege in your lifetime of watching those lives you have transformed transform others hallelujah dr miles munro of blessed memory a man who has changed my life so much i honor him in life and in death he said this he said the greatest tragedy in life is not death the greatest tragedy in life is a life without a purpose a life without a meaning a life without a reason for living that you get up in the morning and there is no constructive definition as to what justifies your living there are so many people angry and frustrated in life listen please we attempt to cover the need for activating and fulfilling destiny with many things we try education and then you know after many years of laborious study we don't seem to make sense out of our sacrifice we try marriage and for many people is hell they are living in hell literally we try money we try several things in an attempt to get to that place but it doesn't seem to bring that fulfillment and satisfaction and many people in nigeria in their old age are full of regrets are full of pain anointed people inclusive so tonight i want to challenge us there's nothing that gives me joy as seeing an individual or a people listen please living a life of purpose and a life of meaning your need for the anointing is useless without an understanding of destiny your need for financial prosperity your need for a wife or a husband your need for children your need for influence is absolutely useless if you do not understand god's idea of destiny say there is a place for me in life i want you to shout it with conviction listen there is no man born of a woman i know you've heard it but listen to it with an anointing on it there is no man born of a woman regardless of the conditions that surrounded your birth dr miles muro said there may be illegitimate parents but there are not there may be illegitimate relationships but there are no illegitimate children the concept of an illegitimate child is just a sociocultural term it does not exist there's no such thing as an illegitimate child are we together everybody that appears on this earth appears for a reason intentionally allowed to come nobody listen nobody has the power in himself to just fabricate a child and bring him in this realm are we together now so every one of us seated here and those following and listening we have a place in life and destiny but so many people never get to discover it so many people never get to live in the reality in fact it's, it's cheaper to not even discover it than to discover it and never actualize it in your lifetime you can justify your pain by saying i never had a, an opportunity to know but then it's painful when you know that this is the prophetic blueprint of my life and then you never get to live it are we together there is no one sent here on earth by mistake you just arrive and then you say lord why am i here and god will say ah sorry oh, let's check why is he here exactly no 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 no. we can choose to refuse to become the prophecy upon our lives we can reject god's program for our lives and create another program by ourselves but anyone who will find fulfillment especially in this end time there are men and women who must align to the purposes of the kingdom listen you are not here to create a program for yourself you are here to walk in a program that has been predestined are we together jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5 he was speaking to a little boy called jeremiah 
revealing to him his prophetic destiny this was a little boy who was destined to be a prophet to speak the purposes of god over nations and here he was having an encounter with the lord and then he was receiving a download of the blueprint what he would live for what he would die for and here's what he says before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb i sanctified thee and i did what ordained thee a prophet to the nations so on on jeremiah's day of birth jeremiah's mother would have held him and looked at him and said wow little child very helpless but in the launch of prophecy that was a prophet when you read further it begins to reveal the extent of his prophetic influence how that he was vested with the responsibility of not only speaking god's counsel to individuals but to kings to nations to nobles it was up to jeremiah to never fulfill that there was a man in the bible called elisha and the bible tells us that elisha was a farmer but in that farmer was a prophet a prophet who would do mighty things he would have died a farmer because he did not know the road to the city but something happened in his life may you find the road map to your destiny in the name of jesus christ let me tell you you see jealousy look up please jealousy resentment huh? all of this criticism backbiting are a direct product of the confusion usually when we meet a stumbling block on our road to destiny and we are surrounded by all kinds of vagueness and confusion that idleness in our confusion will make us to turn and when you see another life working with a level of dexterity and accuracy it usually will create a reaction that reaction is what we call resentment that reaction is what we call criticism are we together now so it's not about saying stop criticizing people you have to be too busy in your idleness you there is nothing else to do but when you find something that occupies you the time span a match for you will look too short the, a sense of urgency will drive you like a madman are we together now everyone has a destiny in christ hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 jesus who was a portrait of our life the firstborn among the many brethren in the similitude of our life said this said lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will oh god lo i come this is why i came when jesus showed up no confusion he understood exactly the blueprint of his life when he went to the temple in luke chapter 4 the bible says it was given to him the scroll of Isaiah, the prophecy that isaiah prophesied about him and then he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me because this and that and that look at a little boy at age 12 he had discovered covered his assignment already was about at the temple studying and preparing for a great destiny to an extent that he told his parents he said ah, do you not know are you no longer uh, um, well not bible students but do you no longer go to the temple to hear the prophecy mary have you forgotten i thought you said the angel spoke to you why are you questioning my zeal to fulfill the reason for which i was born 33 and a half years and he made an impact with his life that for eternity we will never recover truly truly i believe in long life but sincerely speaking it's not how long you live but how effective there is a way a man's one year can become someone else's lifetime and impact in one year can be so transgenerational jesus died at 33 and a half or a quarter years old but out of that 33 years only three years were used in active ministry are we together lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me tonight i want to share with us on the requirements for manifesting your destiny that's not a topic it's just what i want to do now 
the requirements the cost dimension many of us are aware i'm not so much about the discovery as it is manifesting it I've, I've done a teaching discovering your purpose you can get it and several other teachings along the um the lines of destiny but tonight the lord put it in my heart to teach us there is a system everybody said there is a system you're not going to walk to to your place of destiny just um by default nothing works in life until you walk it nothing moves in life until you move it right newton's first law of mechanics nothing will move until you move it you sit down the way you are nothing will change you will grow older the only thing that will change is your age you are celebrating 35 36 then you jump to 47 48 but your life is not moving do you know my concept of birthdays i truly believe in celebrating birthdays but birthday is not just the fact that you were born in my opinion birthdays should be celebrated only when purpose is discovered and is being lived you truly do not have a right you have a right to thank god for being born but you have no right to celebrate your birthday what are you celebrating you should celebrate the reason for living if your life is so impactful you will not even be the one celebrating you would have blessed people too much they will be too grateful to leave you when you have to call everybody and remind them hi jimmy abba you mean you you are you are just remembering that it's my birthday it's a message read the writings on the wall your life is not notable enough there are people they prepare for their birthdays one year as soon as they finish one they start what do i do for him for all that he has done in my life some of us harass people we have never invested in their lives two weeks to my birthday said just to let you know that it's my birthday and you send a general bulk message again reminder and then out of those 200 people maybe only two or three it's a message it's not for you to be angry it's a sign that your life is not blessing anybody notably let me tell you no matter how dark and depraved people are when you bless their lives they become too grateful to not notice it is god speaking to us i want to share with you some strong requirements you must be determined to not just succeed but fulfill your destiny my concept of success is fulfilling your assignment not just moving forward not just getting married not just finishing school not just getting a job or a promotion or a raise all those things are periphery the, the truth is listen listen let me tell you if you do not find out god's goal for your life and you are not living it you are wasting your time and you are wasting the time of others amen are we together i'd like you to pray a prayer before we go into the details of the requirement and say lord any price for my destiny i receive grace to pray it lift your voice if you are not ready you don't have to pray you won't go to hell but be sure that you are not going to rise any price for my destiny lord i'm tired of living my life carelessly i'm growing older time is going there's nothing that is giving my life meaning as i listen to your word now lord if it will sting me let it sting me but my heart my mind my spirit is open let no price be too great oh god for my destiny let no price be too great for my destiny are you praying lord there is an anointing upon my life the nations must drink from there is no price that is too great make sure you are praying don't be careless tonight you are about to hear something that will change your life some of you change your lineage because of you through you you've been complaining about what has happened now god is giving you a choice to make a decision that probably your parents did not make lord let pain let pain not stand my way to greatness give me grace to conquer pain give me grace to conquer shame le 
Kaparoto Subakatela Bakaria da Balarabos. Alleluia. Let's write. Number one requirement to fulfilling your God given destiny. The first requirement is an encounter with Jesus. A genuine encounter with Jesus. Not coming out for an altar call. That's important. But an encounter with Jesus. John 7. When you read John 7. John 3, I'm sorry. Verse 7. Actually, it's 3 to 7. John chapter 3. The encounter that Nicodemus had with Jesus now understand this the context of that scripture is very interesting because Nicodemus was a teacher of the law Nicodemus was a doctor he was a philosopher he was intelligent he was a graduate he was even employed Nicodemus was not a small man he was a man of influence but every time together with his colleagues they kept insulting jesus castigating jesus but they were secret fears and frustration nicodemus got to a point where his life was not making sense and then he sneaked in by night and came to jesus and then he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him and then jesus said verily verily i say unto you right he said except ye be born again you shall not see the kingdom of god now he, he begins to talk how can i be born again will i enter into my mother's womb and then verse 5 he now says um you know verily verily i say unto you except ye be born of the water and of the spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom right then jesus now begins to speak and all of that and says the wind bloweth where it listed verse 7 that's where i'm really going to verse 7 this is what he said marvel not that i say unto you ye must be born again it didn't say ye may it didn't say ye should being born again is not an advice being born again is a requirement writing jam is not an advice writing jam is a requirement having five credits no story is not an advice are we together is the necessary and sufficient condition to gain admission let me tell you life has requirements there is a cut off point the starting point is born again it's amazing how many people want to walk with god but they don't want to be born again they want to be around church they want to be around the things of god they want to have christian names being born again is more than just confessing jesus being born again is prioritizing god that God becomes your obsession, your priority, and your motivation. There's no hope of leaving him as born again. Because he, he, he explained it. He said you must be born of two things. The water and the spirit. The water there represents the ministry of the word. The cleansing power of the word. An encounter with the Holy Ghost. Being born again is not just cheap talk where you just come and stand i believe in you you are pinching yourself and laughing it may be a starting point but i'm telling you being born again is much more than jesus becoming one of those important deities there is a herbalist at home there is jesus there is the charm it's just that he's the most important of all of them you are not born again please i'm saying this whether you are listening here and you are or you are following online if you have any other charm any other talisman any any other material a point of reference point of of activating the realm of the spirit outside of christ and everything that is consistent with his character you are not born again very simple are we together dear you can't tell me you are born again and then under certain conditions you can receive something you know and many of us listen many of us young people you may be laughing at me but there's something they gave you from home they say look life this life is more than what you are seeing that is true you need help that is true but the, where the problem starts is what you are giving they pray for you and give you a bible and then they squeeze one charm that looks like an arrow they tell you to put it under your box you are not born again no sir see let me tell you anything that the lord jesus cannot bring in your life don't let anybody fool you 
that it will happen it may look like it's happening but you see because jesus said i am the door do you know what that means i am the legal access point to everything in the kingdom he never said i am the only one he said i am the door any other person can enter the house through windows but there is always a side effect you will not see it yet until the charm starts working so the charm will give you money and take your fertility are you getting the point now that's not the discussion with the herbalist he himself does not know the side effect because he's practicing so you collect the charm you start building the house but then you find out that you cannot give birth again or you give birth to 12 children and none of them become useful any other door listen there are many like this place now if we see you smuggling yourself through this window we know you are an armed robber you are a thief are we together there is a legitimate entrance don't tell me you are entering which way are you following jesus said i am the door i am the door don't tell me you are getting rich don't tell me you are getting blessed don't tell me you are increasing it matters to me whether you are following the door then i will know whether your success will have side effect on me let me tell you don't come close to anybody until you study the systems around his life and how he is doing what he is doing how she is doing what she is doing are we together now an encounter with jesus when you encounter jesus you will not only love him you will follow him you will not only love him you will serve him you will not only love him you will live for him you will not only love him you will influence others into that encounter with him has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with being a man of god it is the effect of an encounter when saul of Tarsus in the book of acts had an encounter with the lord jesus christ it changed his life forever remember what's the name of that short man in the bible zacchaeus when zacchaeus had an encounter with jesus what happened it changed his life forever zacchaeus just come down i'm going to your house at once zacchaeus changed when he met the centurion he changed there were other people i believe that jesus met that were not recorded in the bible because you see the way they had a soft spot towards him one of them was joseph of arimathea i believe he was a great man and because he was caesar's friend you can liken it to being in the same political party so he would not be outspoken about jesus but secretly secretly he loved him have you had an encounter with jesus enough to fuel your life for a lifetime if the lifespan do you know it's a terrible thing when people love god on campus or love god before marriage i have seen many people who used to love god on campus you see them today they are hardly born again some were campus fellowship presidents some held crusades have you seen some of our parents you see them drinking beer and you say daddy do something about it say look i held crusade in benin i held crusade in abuja i did three days dry you see them giving you what is supposed to be a good accolade and they say i've tried everything so don't even bring this issue of man of god you are just starting before you were born we served god have you heard of ebenezer obey i was in his band have you heard of uh, so 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 and so i i sang there they carry the pain of their frustration and make it look as though it's serving god that brought that to them it's a terrible thing for someone to say i once was with god and now i've left him no sir he said ye who have continued with me not those who started ye who have continued with me lift your voice in one minute and say lord i'm with you forever i'm with you forever i'm with you forever mm. lift your voice and pray I need you to secure your place because some of us are already one leg in one leg out the pain of recession is about sweeping you ah! Jesus Jesus how I trust you how I prove the Lord Jesus 
Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust. Lift your voice and say, Lord, what shall separate me from your love? Not famine, uh -uh. not CGPA, not recession. I am with you and I am with you forever. Whether things work well or not, whether ministry works well or not, is a decision I have made. Lift your voice and pray. Any other person can make his decision. Any other person can say anything. Lord, I know that I may be angry if I don't succeed, but leaving you is not part of the equation. It's a sword covenant. It's a fraternity with you in life and in death. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. With all my strength, with all I am, I will sing to honor His command. I pledge allegiance. Sing it like a kingdom anthem from your heart. I pledge of an encounter you will raise your children after your encounter don't tell me you are a christian father are you getting what i'm saying and you give birth to a child and then you don't care what the child is watching you don't care whether the child is going to church are we together many little children that's why i love our little ones in koinonia you may think they are not understanding what we are teaching but it's entering their spirit we live in a society where parents they, they just their assignment is just to give birth to children they give them education they give them every other thing but jesus are we together yeah you're going to church you leave the baby with the house help are we together you come back from church and you sit down other adults are watching certain things that may not be good for the child you don't care let me tell you if you have an, an encounter with jesus everything you do whoever is under your roof will do it oh come on you stay under my roof as i'm blasting tongues i want to hear your own in your room in your room you are responding you you don't stay under my roof i'm paying for your life and you are living your life then it means you are an adult enough if you stay under my roof you will serve jesus i assure you please take what i'm saying seriously our society is depraved today because many parents went to church but they did not have encounter so they only gave us what was valuable to them which was education as good as it is they didn't give us jesus some of us were on our way to destruction but god intercepted ah hallelujah you've heard me say it again and again when a lady brings a gentleman a lady brings a gentleman to her parents they don't ask whether he's born again and serious with god let me tell you in one minute i can know whether you are born again or not even if you wear suit this is a culture this is a culture are we together so we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom we give our sons to wicked women who are anti-christ and we this this
combination produces nonsense that's what is destroying our, our generation now what we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years the carelessness of 40 years and if we do not correct it let me tell you the key is not insulting the government there must be a generation that is addicted and no nonsense about God imagine a man getting married with his wife two of them pray in tongues no problem two of them love God no problem as you give birth to your child before wicked men hold him you hold him as the father Shakata bakataya. you are prophesying what are you doing I'm prophesying oh stop that thing are you joking that's how I married in the first place I call you blessed you came out from my loins I prophesy you will everything is born after its kind I will not love God and give birth to an armed robber so you prophesy if I'm your father you should look like it I'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society to an extent to an extent that if you are godly they look at you as if something is wrong with your life you have to explain godliness something that should be institutionalized go outside of Zaria and see a young lady if a young lady likes a guy do you know how she attracts him she starts singing bad and nonsense song thinking that's what he likes are you getting the point now so you sing all of the songs thinking that by singing that the guy will be attracted brother shout no way Abba. Abba. after reading proverbs 31 <laughs> ladies you to shout no way don't bring shell and nmpc and deceive anybody do you have an encounter with jesus listen don't just say i have an encounter with god god means anything do you have an encounter with jesus the son of the living god let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with jesus you are unashamed about submitting to his values if you have met jesus then you must be ready to submit to his values don't come and meet me with your philosophy your ideology you have not met jesus listen if you are here in koinonia if you are truly under this grace you should have submitted to our way of doing things so when you see somebody who is under this grace you know at once the way you talk the things you do your passion for god you can easily know someone who just came to koinonia for the first time sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and i see the reaction in people it's like no 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 this is anti koinonia culture i can see it in you so why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again born again is like an id card you can see it is visible this 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 thing this thing is i'm speaking from my spirit some relationships should be cancelled yeah we cancel it in jesus name i'm not asking you you will see what will happen from the prophecy because some of you are insisting i cancel it in the name of jesus christ destroy your life in the name of love love is not stupidity are we together if you have had an encounter with jesus you must have the value system of kingdom somebody comes to your house everything he's saying is nonsense every wrong word do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again societally speaking when you are getting to certain political positions they culture you when you when you are going to see the queen of england or they culture you you learn how to speak there are indices that show you have encountered god number one your words not just dressing your words you speak nonsense you say anything anytime you ever come on please please all kinds of selection in your phone there is the one for when you are high you, you just take it high then whenever you feel guilty when you listen to messages on rapture the coming of christ you just switch truly you have not encountered jesus don't laugh as i'm telling you this because it's a serious thing you are not going to bribe God into fulfilling destiny. It has to be His way. Everybody say an encounter with Jesus. Now lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, anything trying to prove in my life that I've not had an encounter, drive it. Drive it far. 
drive it far drive it far some of you need to make some calls to certain people call that gentleman and tell him i love you but apostle just preached a message i can't marry you it can't work again sorry about the time i've wasted it can't work again it's as simple as that some of us who are about to get married some of us who have children it's time to get back bring the cross to your house bring christian values to your house don't live a life that is vulgar don't raise children that are wayward in discipline no sir no sir hallelujah listen listen you see these are the things that should be discussed in church i'm telling you this are we together yeah how many elders are not born again we just array the names of people when did this one join our church 1991 when did this one join our church 98 if we give this person and don't give this he'll be angry well let's give him something are you seeing that and then you now pick somebody just because he's old he is the elder in charge of marriage counseling you have never supervised what he's teaching the young people and they come around and he's teaching nonsense do you think all this idea of beating wife do you think people just invented it someone advise somebody and say i did it it worked do it it works let's return jesus to our lives oh let's return jesus to our lives you know what i'm saying is not a lie give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late the lord so please if you are here today at the end of the service i'll make an altar call please i want you to examine your concept of born again if you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom you need jesus please let's not argue this thing this night you need jesus i don't care whether you are praying in tongues no sir are we together then your life then your home if my shirt has palm oil you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and i hold you there if you leave won't you see some stain something about, show me what implicates you and shows us you have met jesus don't just say you met jesus the bible says in the book of acts in the jerusalem council when they saw peter they saw these guys they knew they were timid but they knew they had been with jesus they saw them when they were timid but now they had seen them men of conviction let's sit down and continue an encounter with jesus number one number two now that we have cleared the way i want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that i want to bring is really where the anointing is this night so what you have even received now is an appetizer here comes the main course may you eat it every part of it in jesus name the second key the second key to fulfilling your destiny the second key to fulfilling your god-given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness write it down the power of preparation and thoroughness preparation thoroughness preparation thoroughness the power of preparation the power of thoroughness second chronicles 27 please verse 6 second chronicles 27 verse 6 second chronicles 27 i like us to read it is projected one to read so dotham became uh-huh 
because he prepared his ways before the Lord what was the secret of his exploits what was the secret of his might he prepared his way and he did that in the presence of God under his supervision preparation there is power in preparation write it down there is power in preparation we live in a time and a generation especially for we young people there is such an obsession for manifestation such an obsession for manifestation oh let me prove i'm a millionaire by age 20 let me prove i'm this and that let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things but preparation preparation there is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point and we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation what do you do during preparation number one what do you do during preparation number one you learn and understand the principles of the kingdom i call them the mysteries of the kingdom that's what you do during times of preparation your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom God has called me into an extraordinary ministry. God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry. God has told me I'm going to the nations. Every time in my dream, I see myself changing people. Thank you, man of God. But what are you doing about it? Oh, I'm already buying suits. God has even shown me who my wife will be. That's not preparation. You are, that's carelessness. I assure you, you will not arrive that way. Preparation. This great ministry that God is giving me, what will it take? what do i know do i understand administration do i understand finances this great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing have i understood the mysteries listen i want you to put your life on a project find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them find out there are many tools we need you need the anointing in the place of destiny have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life and multiply it in your life number two you need access to revelation the working knowledge of the word of god what keys do you have in your hand show me the keys you are accessing and i'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow finances our destinies are capital intensive so they require a lot of finances show me what mentorship show me what book you are reading oh apostle i'm doing business you will fail that's not the key the key is to receive knowledge the key is to change your mindset not to offer products and services yet that's the last step of the equation we love manifestation we love manifestation i receive text messages all the time and most of what people we, we we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year i said shift that vision to the future it's certainly not happening now no convention for what what is the meaning of the word convention what is the meaning of the word conference we abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation are we together now now is the time for building please hear me now is not the time for buying suits now is the time for buying books now is the time for buying the experiences of people now is the time for buying the pain of people buy their experiences preparation I see many people who say they want to be men of God I don't criticize them but I'm just laughing because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down you are joking if it was that easy I guarantee you people will not be suffering Benihin came around Nigeria and you see the number of desperate people we all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing what does that tell you is scarce genuine power is scarce make no mistakes about it do you know why many people do not rise we are comfortable with average average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you 
reward is for those who are distinguished not those who are present <laughs> is God speaking to someone there is power in preparation let me tell you when I started out in ministry I didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life no no that time ask Jimmy I used to walk with a bag remember my black bag it had Bible it had my books the books the speakings of God to my life I would always walk with it those were the times you see people who buy tape or they post tape maybe pastor Chris any other tape and they are small rechargeable they will raise all their money and buy rechargeable not not many of us seated here you do not have any device for hearing the word of God you don't but you have clothes you're a young lady of 19 20 you have clothes of a married woman of 35 it's not wise it's, it's a terrible it's an extended version of foolishness are we together you you must take your destiny serious this thing does not happen by magic god is not a charm he's not a genie you've got to be serious some of us as you keep your bible like this is friday that you pick it again and yet you move around i am i i, I hope to be called let's see which one uh, prophet apostle i'll use pastor you are dreaming <laughs> are we together one gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming i said who are you he says a man of God somewhere. I said, that's all right, you are welcome. Then he sent me a text. He says, informing me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front. I said, my brother, this front seat you see is a testimony. The front seat is not a wish. It's a testimony. This is a testimony. You, you come and sit down. The seat will reject you. Have you seen that kind of thing? Where people, kings, come and sit down. They say somebody dies. You don't sit down in a seat unprepared, sir. No. I look at your prayer life and I know whether you are preparing you want to be able to stand and preach that's what kills a lot of men of God they have not built that spiritual capacity don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business you are making an investment of strength into your future a time will come you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again I can't pray for 10 hours every day I'll be an irresponsible man of God because there are things to do but there were times I would stay morning till night. I was building strength. He said, eat for the journey is far. Brothers and sisters, some of you, now is the time to lock yourself. You may look stupid, but you are building an extraordinary ministry. You are already in prayer band two weeks. You say they don't know me. Please sit down, Jare, and, and work on your destiny. All this quest for recognition. Recognition. I think they should know me. No, sit down. Sit down. There is power in preparation let your competence announce you let the grace upon your life announce you you cannot light a lamp and put it under a bush but you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top all this quest for manifestation please hear the voice of the Lord tonight that's not the way to do it that's not the way to do it someone asked me a question i think i don't know if it was a year or two ago and said apostle what are you doing with your life now i told him i said i am preparing for an extraordinary life he said preparing i said exactly uh, you think this thing i'm doing is ministry this is industrial attachment my goodness my goodness my goodness this is not close to what i've seen in the visions of the lord it doesn't even look like it compared to the koinonia god showed me this is a, a cave we are just waking up are you that inspired or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you I fed my life. We don't need. I you for life. Let me come to your house.
house and your room show me your library and i see how serious you are with knowledge books are very important they are a communication of your value for knowledge when you buy a book you are not buying paper you are buying a man's pain you are you are you are you are buying access to a man's testimony people's mistakes at a platter of gold for you to study and understand there are many people who don't read let me tell you how you know you are not preparing for your destiny is excessive idleness when i see a young man who is idle you must be lazy or you are not preparing do you know the urgency number one for most of us over 95 percent of us a mistake has already been made in our foundation i hope you know some of us got born again at 26 27 you are already behind at age 14 mary was giving birth to jesus you are 25 you are not born again you are already behind schedule why should you be roaming up and down in broad daylight you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane gisting and then they come to someone else's house how are you i was just strolling are you free and then they are offended when you say you are not free everybody say i'm going somewhere say it i'm going somewhere and now is the season of preparation i will prepare you want to be a millionaire let me see the preparation let me see the preparation show me the character traits you are building that will qualify god to grant you access to such wealth you want to be an extraordinary leader show me those who are receiving mentorship you are moving around not doing anything ladies hear me be under pressure the next thing in your life after school is not just marriage thank god for marriage but build yourself focus on preparation than manifestation you are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for preparation preparation settle down prepare kata kata baladaba lord you said you are going to give me the nations work on my character let me become an exceptional man of god lord at this small level of ministry they are already criticizing me i can imagine the criticisms on great men like papa oyedeko and adeboye lord build me you have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth can i survive the criticism that takes that that having that kind of anointing will bring don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich do you know the criticisms somebody will look at you and say young people like this they, they, they touch something you are right you are right nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing they've criticized you small somebody just looked and said i don't like pastor femi's shirt and he's, he's angry he's quarreling he said no no what is wrong with my shirt ah and then you now want to be a leader over two million people you want to die ask moses moses the meekest man on earth he was angry and about to kill himself god said calm down that's how ministry is have you ever gone to god for prayer and god said no that's how it is so i hope you know that that there is no breakthrough for this prayer is how it works interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade I, after the prayer fasting visions everything he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with he couldn't even start i told him i said well these are the logistics that are part of ministry And he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind i was the sponsor of that crusade i said no way god did not give me any vision i am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from god flog out your way of funding that vision brothers and sisters preparation is powerful when you go through you read books 
and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life nothing worked and then you say that I'm four years that means there's hope for me that means it's not unusual it's not like I don't have faith let's continue going you study about a man who built his conglomerates he will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed he was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you and you say i just built three and they failed ah there's hope for me you are learning preparation is giving you strength a time will come they look at you and they say you claim to be a man of god's wife look at your husband his mouth is looking dry you are not feeding him and you say oh, but husband am i not feeding you you didn't prepare because if you prepared you would have studied other men of god's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal so as they are insulting you you just say oh so that's how it is your spirit has been prepared anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing you will see a man of god lying down and think the place is cold you lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin you know what they used to do for masquerade they say they used to cook them so that nothing will happen allow preparation cooking so that while somebody is shouting now and saying do you know apostle is a herbalist do you i know the woman that gave him power and then you come and tell me as a as a concern i say apostle i respect you just spoiling your name and then i laugh <laughs> i would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort god is speaking to someone tonight preparation some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service bishop oyeriko did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should i start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, ah, I see this mountain, I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is there is a solution for that mountain. Oh man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million. I am complaining. In 91, we we're owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you, and he says, Look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed and go to bed nothing is as bad as it is and then you conquer that i remember when one time um we held a little program and i was going thirty thousand thirty thousand i was sweating i didn't know what to do with my life thirty thousand it was from one book money somebody loaned us it was so terrible i remember the day it was even late dr bimbo dukoya's books when they brought her to zaria 2005 after organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship are we together now there was no i mean the whole thing and they needed the money by nine o'clock nine o'clock by seven o'clock i don't i'm not sure i had up to 500 i was sweating around i didn't know what to do so now you are owing eight thousand and you are moving around my blood I, I think i'm having high blood pressure calm down calm down there is something preparation will teach you as you stand up and walk god is speaking to someone it is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10 find out what they did to come out preparation and dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you i have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as i am now yet they were able to go through some things and i said no at this level i even know more there's no reason why i should reject it will work to work you are not the first to get married you are planning for marriage and you just say ah, my budget is 1.5 eh? dr jenner 1.5 you are seeing a man with two children you will not ask questions sir two children means you married what happened what did you do you know see it's pride 
to think your problem is new to everybody is pride what is a mountain to you is a valley to someone you are not the first to have carryover hey will i stay or will they drive me please go to bed there are people who have taught this lad you are seeing left right and center to a point that they just look at the board and say glory be to god hallelujah fear is as a result of ignorance and it's partly a product of not preparing you have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today because if you buy their materials and study their lives you will learn their pain koinonia was not built in a day many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care all you know is that you are enjoying there will be workers dinner and it's free paid for just dress well and come i said i like coin on i like a ministry that takes care of us like this there was a story there was a story behind it preparation you learn the principles of the kingdom preparation that's the time of trial and error please hear me that's the time when you are you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door you will use wrong keys you will use wrong keys it's in the place of preparation you will know how the anointing works so god will keep building you you will read the books you will listen to the messages then one day you and god will go on small it somebody will now say please pastor femi can you just pray for our little group and say ah me i mean you are even calling me pastor and then on that day you will pray some things will happen others will not happen you will first go with confidence you are fasted dry it's even dry you went for the meeting and then you go there before you start preaching somebody is already shouting and you're like eh? that means this thing is easy then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall and i said what's the confusion i didn't lay hands on anybody somebody was shouting the ones i now in direct contact with the anointing so preparation you now go back in one message you are hearing you will hear a mystery that explains that operation say, ah this is what i did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances god told you you'll be a multi-millionaire ceo all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day god will give you it somebody will just send you four hundred thousand and say please can you keep it for me for two weeks and you find out your body is shaking you can't sleep you will get up you are moving up and down you say ah, should i touch this money and pay back quickly you see a revelation that you are not qualified you are beginning to see the effect of money then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit it's not just notes it can do something to you and you are now thinking 200 thousand is in my account and i cannot sleep what will happen if 200 million is in my account then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down he's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water it took discipline to conquer that what are you what are you ignoring by refusing preparation is god speaking to someone you are preparing you want to be a good wife in the process of preparation you will read a book and see that a man of god's wife she will now say god told me when god told me my husband did not yet know and god was sending me to women to go and cook with them and you say ah the holy spirit will tell you now go and do likewise you will now say ah auntie shade please can i come to your house just to help you and while you are washing place you are asking her questions and she's answering what happens when a great man is angry as a good wife how do you treat if your husband is a public figure how do you shield him you are not learning you are only saying this brother god has been speaking you are not seeing me you would never see you because god is not a wicked god to carry his servant laboring and just give you no you prepare you prepare say amen stop claiming things carelessly sit down and prepare and before you know it you will see them in your hands I respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation 
there are people you see in this koinonia mighty men and women in the spirit very mighty you just see them quiet some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them they are prayer like fire their word like fire the maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon nobody even knows them they are quiet god is preparing them one day you just see god will carry one brother and give them and say, ah, where is this one coming from are you joking nobody comes from nowhere people are preparing quietly you are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing but you are not prepared I receive grace to prepare lift your voice and pray i receive grace lord i see how i've been shortchanging myself i've been acting like i've arrived i've been trying to look rich i've been trying to look anointed by this teaching tonight oh god i receive grace grace koinonia pray i stop complaining about what is not working I value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me and I make up my mind to draw from them hallelujah praise the Lord a pastor sent me a text and the pastor was really complaining he said man of God God is increasing us in ministry but right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died my prayer life has died my word life has died i still see miracles i still see great things but i'm so disorganized i used to be an organized person and i told him i said you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry are we together do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life there is a technique it's not just as the spirit leads there is a system how do you maintain a prayer life reading chapters of the bible when from morning till night you are working how do you balance that as an influential person you are married with two three children how do you maintain your spiritual life how do you maintain a good fatherhood and a, a good husband you are not the first to go through it find out there are people who are flawlessly effective find out there are men of god who preach five six messages every week and everything is new you want you are already tired your little fellowship in one state somewhere maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you yet people like dr paul and running six services every sunday two services every week intermittently they can travel to europe and come back in the morning find out there is a system there is a system otherwise it will kill you john g lake did not understand that he did well in ministry and died in his family life what is the secret of men of god who are effective in family their schedules are packed full everything i remember when we started i didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy i used to handle them by myself you bring your letter you come and give me i look at it i say okay let me go and pray about it at a point there were several letters i said yes to many people i'll say yes i'm coming to your church yes i'm coming to your fellowship i will not even remember i found out that i had to prepare four five messages in a week it was weighing me down i said it's not like i don't have what to say but i can't stand before god's people and preach what i know god is not leading me to say i can preach any nice sermon but will it be effective are we together what do you not know i'm drawing you to a point your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere then i began to study i got bishop oedeko's books towards excellence in life and ministry i got that what that Hayward mills book church administration and management i got some of their just books pastoring without tears i got some of these materials and sat down when i began to study i said ah so this is how it works i've been killing myself for no reason are we together killing myself for no reason i remember when i had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call it was like i'm a receptionist somebody will call and say is this apostle i just want to know and for five minutes you are arguing with the person is this apostle if it's not apostle please don't waste my time and it's my credit too. 
I'm now calling and say, it's Apostle, it's true, Apostle, please, do you have time? Because what I'm about to tell you is, is boiling in my spirit. And I'll now carry my big head and say, yes, I have time. And for 30 minutes, while you are talking, another text is entering, another call. And I find out that sometimes you can stay three hours. You are just answering call. And you are fagged out, you are fatigued. Someone who finishes work, he will work well, have a nice time with his wife, go to church and come back, then call you. That's when you now want to rest. Then others started calling by one or two because they found out that I don't sleep in the night. They will now call and say, Apostle, sorry, you. They just go ahead. I used to feel so guilty. If I'm sleeping and my phone is ringing, I feel so bad until I read a man of God's book that delivered me. Now it can ring. If it's an emergency, call the police. Yeah. People would threaten me and say man of God pride pride you've not gotten anywhere you used to respond to us before you even used to send us recharge card but now you are you are getting arrogant I will feel so bad I'll say but God please search my heart until I found out that that's how people are it's not like they are just becoming it for me they are like that everywhere I just said ah please go to bed ah somebody's already gaining wisdom gaining wisdom so when you walk out of here and you say, see what she's wearing you say why does everybody hate me no you are not the only one it's like that you are just discovering it you are just discovering it i don't know why everybody talks about me everybody is there something wrong ah if if you are looking at your legs you will cut two of your legs because there are too many people who can talk ah god is giving us wisdom preparation 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 there are some of us married people people come to your house you are under pressure to cook for them and give them everything because let, let them not say we are not good let them say who oh. let them say because you will find lousy people they'll come to your house is there pepper soup in this house you will think they are joking they really mean it you would rush go to the market buy, buy cow you think it's just a joke you are not learning to grow up you need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that two o'clock they'll come again they'll say sorry oh we are here again is there still something for us then you will read a book that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said please visitor we have we have a program in this house there are times we have bible study there are times i'm just spending time with my wife there are times we are spending time with the children it is important to let us know you are coming now say what is there what do you think you are leave him let him go carry his trouble and go at least you are free now there is something you need to know to set you free most of this depression we are having is because there's something you don't know so you sit down there and think people are talking about you what will they be saying about me what would they say do well they will talk don't do well they will talk so be used to it and enjoy your life you see what preparation does for you so you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you and you become a motivated leader and everybody looks at you and says wow this guy is a leader worthy of emulation then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence say amen you have to learn the principles of the kingdom very quickly there are four areas still under the second point there are four areas that you must work on four areas that you must work on number one you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom generally as regards understanding the word of god and applying it understanding the word of god and applying it you must contend for that mystery you must know how to apply scripture to your life if you want to be great use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of god work number two you must contend for the secret to the anointing in your place of preparation you must find out you cannot um, it has nothing to do with ministry you want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes you are joking so in your place of preparation you have to find out this anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many how does it come number three
you must find out principles of leadership and administration I know you are a man of God but you are going to have leaders I know you are a businessman but it will not always be popcorn forever a day will come you have companies with offices you must understand principles of leadership and administration number three you must understand finances you must in your place of preparation you must study finances no matter how much of a man of god you are a businessman a father you must this is a tool i'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny you need it study on finances don't just be a money monger don't just be a hustler don't just be obsessed about money and business understand the system understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop Oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragement is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of god you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very corny people people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships number three the last point action the last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action the power of action so number one is an encounter with jesus number two is the power of preparation number three is action the power of sustained action now by action i don't just mean movement action means the relevant steps that you take action takes courage write it down when you are about to take action over your life your business your ministry it takes courage to act brothers and sisters there are things you are going to be doing in your life you will be the first person to do it in your entire family it takes action it takes courage joshua chapter one he said be strong and of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it there is fear i was i was talking with i can't remember who i was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and i told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as it is as the presence of a demon spirit you cast that one out god has not given us that spirit of fear but every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary that that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear it's not unusual there are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation but action action are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you 
are we together he's not submitted any application and the lord is telling you stand up and go to benin and submit your application say ah god no 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 no. who is going to pay my money where am i going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail people rally around them are you sure it's god and they destroy people's destinies how many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches how many great destinies there are people who who left who left certain precious jobs that god gave them simply because of an advice if they are shouting at you like that is he worth it and then you leave it and now you are suffering are we together number three action requires a system now this is very important you don't just act carelessly you act based on a system you build a system you build a system around your action for instance when it's now time for you god has called you and god has anointed you and told you it's time you now sit down there there is a system you can start a prayer group a prayer fellowship as god is bringing people they are getting healed they are getting blessed god is lifting you god is bringing people into your life most of the people god is bringing are not your members stop calling them your members and sons and daughters they are your leaders in the making are we together god never sends members he sends leaders they will come as drunkards they will come as troublemakers your assignment is to prove your apostleship make them become what you have seen in the vision they will not come ready-made action you must build a system around it we had a system like that when he and i was starting we'll get people born again there was a system you got filled with the holy spirit and then we were praying and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire a system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system i separate business money from my personal finances maybe i open an account for business i need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so i remember hundred thousand enter why is there sixty thousand you ate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them when people have an encounter with jesus the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under the bible says they that be planted in the house of god they shall flourish in the courts of our god he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing hallelujah just like you are seated now now you are hearing this you are taking steps based on what i'm teaching you will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what i'm saying you will not ignore it as you go back it will burn like fire in your spirit you will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it are we together now and you begin to see your life rise you begin to see yourself improve then you can know that i'm going to be a good man not just because i think i'm good i have studied the system that makes men good 
then I know I'm going to be a blessed man. Not just because I hate poverty. I've studied the system. I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed. Not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself. No, 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 no. I've understood the system. At that point, you can look at life and smile. It's called mastery. You can rise to a point where you look at life and smile and know that I have a great destiny. I have a great destiny. And you look at your life after 20, 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact. On Eagle's Wings, a book written by Bishop David Oedipo, I think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of Living Faith then or so, I looked at everything, the progression on how he started and I said, this is it consistent i have studied many great men of god that's how they started benny him dr mike mudok miles munro all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life i look at their lives and i see consistently consistently there were times in their lives they were for many years it's like things did not happen even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now there was a time it was stagnated so you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving so you go back what did they do oh they fasted they prayed they met together as leaders they readjusted certain things fine papa Ia deboe there was a time redeemed was doing well but it was taunted and god told him that redeemed needed to get to all the nations but as it were redeemed could not cross certain cultures he could not go beyond the south and he went to the lord and then the lord gave him a formula he gave him a secret let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership you must have respect for people's culture and ideology it's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture kingdom culture yes but your your sociological culture and paradigm it may not be possible with every place and so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility so you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, um, church and all of that and then you see another redeemed branch youthful another redeemed branch still you know holding on to certain values he just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it but then gave the flexibility and now redeemed is everywhere festival of life in uk is as if i mean you see them everywhere there france everywhere redeemed because of that secret you can now look at that why is my church not growing ah and god opens your eyes through that light and you now see it oh the reason why my church is not growing is because um i i i hold on to my values but probably i i impose every value both spiritual cultural sociological on people and that value is restraining people that may be just the key you need to adjust and then all of a sudden you find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people action action god is challenging some of us to take action you need to take action over your finances you need to take action there are different action steps you can take you can begin to read books every day you can listen to messages every day you can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship as much as god grants you grace you may need to settle down tell yourself i'm starting that business next month i'm starting it i have prepared i have paid my price i am starting it i will start it or you can say this month of november is dedicated to scattering my cvs around i will anoint it i will pray i brought it for miracle service they have prayed for it now god is waiting on me i will scatter it all around hallelujah we are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action we are enjoying what god has done today because of the power of action listen when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise whether or not you move time is moving whether or not you move time is moving it is important to move with it time is premium the only way to redeem it is to use it well you don't save time you use it well you redeem it by investing properly in it koinonia i bring you a word today there is a prophetic destiny for you in christ 
you have been escorting men some of you after tonight you've got to sit down brothers look at me after tonight some of you when you go back home don't sleep you need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say what am i doing with my life this is not the way it's supposed to work you have been joking around your destiny you are getting old things are not working there is nothing working in your life finances you don't know anything about it fatherhood you don't know anything about it that sense of maturity leadership you've not built anything time is going you have to give yourself a sense of urgency a day will come god will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh it's time for you to begin to study the bible it's time for you to begin to study the bible you want to become a great man of god you don't know the bible you're going to crash land you will be tired your members will be weary they will leave your church and go somewhere else simply because you do not have the word you are not instant in season he tapped elijah and said eat for the journey is well. i want to round up are you preparing are you preparing for your life sister are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage brother do you want to marry by fire by force or are you preparing marriage means a wife marriage means children marriage means the troubles that can come from in-laws have you positioned your spirit to manage it marriage means leadership i want to start a business ceo ceo of what have you studied it I want to become a great man of God. I want to be president and founder or geo. All that one is stories. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Listen. I made a decision years ago. Today now makes it, uh, not today, but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision now I've been working with God I've been doing certain things but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now 14 years ago so when you see this today it's a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost there were many other things that had happened before that time but I made up my mind. I said from today, I will not be irresponsible. From today. I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen. Not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing redeem the time please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense early in the morning you are supposed to be praying six o'clock there in your house because you stay in the same compound bros how you day then please please what what is that shout please i'm happy today's a glorious day take it easy Bros, you don't cook, you don't do this, just speaking, tell him, please, I plan to be a leader. Take it easy. All these your vulgar statements and the rest, I appreciate you, but take it easy. Don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do. No. To behave. Action. You begin to dress well. You begin to be serious about your life. Are we together now? Yeah. Actions that reflect your destiny. You stop excessively spending money anyhow. These are action steps that some of you need to take. Make up your mind that from today, no fake life. I'm not ashamed. If all I can take is Gary now, I'm not going to say others are taking rice. Uh -uh. By God's grace, I will take Gary honorably. Any lady that cannot like me taking Gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me. I will continue moving. No pressure no pressure god has given me two members i will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them no competition are we together now i open an account i'm saving i am disciplined 
be a student and you are buying with one of 10,000, 15,000. It's not wise. You are destroying your future. That 15,000 can buy you a book. 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Energy, 500, 900, 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well. Dress well. You don't look irresponsible. Please, I'm challenging us. We are going to pray. But I need to be sincere with you. You look well. You dress smart. You start learning certain ethics. When you are going before the presence of a great man, you don't look foolish. You destroy yourself. Now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time. There are some of you here, brothers, you don't have one good suit. One good suit. You can budget for it one good suit so that the day god opens a door you have something nice you keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them you don't talk like a fool speak everything and no 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 no, no. you act like you are preparing to get married there are some of you i see you you are still acting like children although you are matured you begin to act responsibly you see someone's child falling down you create a sense of responsibility oh let me help this person you are taking action that is opening doors for you you see a man that is anointed you don't just stand let's see what he's saying pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say no the law of honor see there is a way you look at someone you know he has grown up you know he has grown up are we together let's take steps for our destiny you may not like what i'm teaching you tonight but just like others who are saying thank you now you will say thank you tomorrow i guarantee you you may not like me for what i'm teaching you now because for some of you i'm challenging you listen there are some of you especially ladies because you are very beautiful your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you so there's nobody to really tell you the truth my name is joshua selman i'm telling you you have to settle down and be serious with your life you cannot float around a destiny full of flattery somebody has got to tell you this is wrong this is right the person who challenges you is the person who loves you god is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home and i will do it well you may not if you like don't hate me no problem but you will thank me tomorrow i love you too much to leave you the way you are stop all this childish play stop all these this irresponsible things people do around gossiping around misbehaving some of you are you have already collected phone on credit go and return it you don't need that kind of lifestyle oh please hey jimmy uh, can i use your trouser for two weeks no you are you are acting like a child can i use your shirt i like your phone can you borrow me i'm traveling somewhere all these things are attitudes of children when i was a child I thought like a child I acted like a child I spoke like a child now that I'm a man what do I do I lay aside these childish things have you laid aside these childish things or are you just growing old maturity let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice I look at you and I see how careful you are I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see you and you say, ah, apostle, you are welcome, may his present. No, 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 you are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you will be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil, you say my wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together you wear clothes that are torn and dirty you don't care no sir you have to behave well say in the name of jesus from today i make up my mind that i will fulfill destiny say it again from today i make up my mind that i will fulfill destiny give me two more minutes and then we'll pray how about bad friends I can't round up without talking about that 
show me your association and i show you your true values show me your association whether you went to the same primary school secondary school it was your chief um, um, um your, your best man whatever <laughs> love you guys what is the chief bride's made praise god all this solidarity to wrong friends you've got to make up your mind you see i've been saying this thing do you know some of us if only you can leave your bad friends your journey to a good life starts especially for us ladies especially for us ladies you love god but the moment you meet them they come with their wrong ideologies and then they force you to have to believe it you just came back from church and now you are making up your mind i will be responsible and someone goes, hey this day oh ladies can I sit down you know that's what you just repented of but because of the presence of that friend he said Todd, just tell me and you now keep listening before you know it you go back to your vomit again may god deliver you this night the courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny see i don't know what is it this our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way if i tell this person sorry you are interrupting my destiny they will feel bad they will criticize me so what so what make up your mind are we together make up your mind this night in the name of the lord jesus christ make up your mind and say things will change i pray that you will really change in the name of jesus christ i pray that you will really change in the name of jesus christ there are many other things we need to change about some of you have up to 20 relationships consciously you don't care to you it's a symbol that you are a fine girl say do you know all these guys are dying i guarantee you none of them will marry you for you to be that careless with your life they will ask you out but when they are ready to marry they will come to church the brother will repent and dress well and come and look for a quiet lady who loves god every man stupid or sensible wants peace in his house are we together yeah so some of us pride ourselves there are good brothers coming they love god they fear god they are coming but you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people you are growing old god will open doors for the brothers the brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow and by that time they will not be ready to marry you they will marry people younger than you don't be angry i'm sorry i'm saying this but i'm challenging you and brothers don't think what i've said now is a license for you to be foolish because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life please don't don't ever use what i'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady if you don't merit saying any no um they will bring you to me you are going to meet me somewhere in the equation uh, we will meet and i will tell you no no you are not you are not responsible enough it's as simple as that she may not have the courage to tell you but i guarantee you i will tell you you know why i'm doing this to you tonight i came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because i i want to challenge you you're on your way to better days you're on your way to better days every marriage you see here by god's grace some of our people here who are gloriously married there were steps they took some of the things you are seeing here the lives that are successful in ministry by god's grace you belong to a ministry that god has helped these are the things that we do they are not what we are saying they are things that we do he said that which you have seen me do among many witnesses do also do also be serious with your life i can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping sleeping snoring any time of the day i'm awake doing something there are sermons to prepare there are videos to watch i am i am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance so passionate please rise up on your feet you're on your way to Saturdays. three prayer points please no moving around we're going to pray this is part of the meeting 
I want you to pair yourselves into two. And let's just take five minutes to really pray. If you are married, please, you can hold your wife or husband, whoever, and pray. Because this is a serious prayer we are going to pray now. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I vow, I make a covenant with my destiny. A covenant of seriousness and purposelessness. From today, I make up my mind to be serious and to be purposeful. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Young and old. Male and female. Those following online. I enter a covenant with my destiny. I must fulfill destiny. From tonight, I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. No more joking. No more playing games with my life. Hallelujah. Please make sure you pray. Those outside, make sure you pray. Something is happening. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every knowledge I need, every light I need to prepare me for an extraordinary life, please reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. The information I need. Access to light. Are you praying? Seka para toshuma. Like a tapaka like on soto koto malama. Take away ignorance, financial ignorance, ministerial ignorance, leadership ignorance. Take it away from my life. Spiritual ignorance. I bring it to the cross and I decree and declare that there's supernatural grace to work it out, to work it out, to work it out. Prayer point number three. Prayer point number three. Oh God, the spirit of laziness and inertia, that spirit that refuses me from being diligent, I cost it right now in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. I challenge laziness, spiritual laziness, mental laziness, physical laziness, wanting something for nothing. I cost that spirit grace to be diligent. Grace to be valuable. Grace to invest in myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Father, destroy premature, the appetite for premature manifestation. Manifestation when I'm not ready. Destroy that appetite from my life. Lift your voice and pray. 
pray premature manifestation in business premature manifestation in ministry premature manifestation in family life premature manifestation in leadership i receive grace i receive grace i receive grace to prepare like Jacob. i prepare my ways before the lord and so i walk strong and mighty for preparation hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point before I pray for you the courage the discipline and the diligence to take necessary action because some of you the season you are in now is the season of action you can't prepare forever you've got to step that spirit of fear that lack of courage what will people say i'd like you to lift your voice and destroy it right now lift your voice and pray Lord, it's time to take action over my finances. It's time to take action over family life. It's time to take action in ministry. The action that will move me over my career, over my job. It's time to take action. lift your hands let me pray for you i want to pray for you sincerely from my heart i want you to believe it god sees my heart whom i serve and god knows that my greatest desire listen my greatest desire i have always frowned at the leadership paradigm that makes one person a superstar shining while the rest are helplessly everybody can shine it will not kill the honor of the leader if you are a true leader even in the greatness of the people you have raised they will honor you and give you your place there are many leaders who are not passionate i made a vow with god when i started ministry when koinonia started i've shared it with you i will never pastor people who are not influential i believe you can be anointed you can be spirit filled you can be responsible you can be financially free you can be influential and useful in the kingdom you do not have to choose one area you can choose everything you don't have to choose prayer and the word and neglect responsibility you don't have to choose excellence and responsibility and neglect the ministry of the spirit all of them are supposed to be complementary so all these teachings that you see i bring them some of the teachings are hard but they are designed to file our lives into action the bible says iron sharpened iron are we together now so as you receive this word don't sit down arguing it don't be offended by it if it strikes you the idea is to receive it into your spirit as the word from god and know that this is coming from a leader that is passionate about your success if i see you today excelling and doing great things for the kingdom is my fulfillment you give me money today i'm blessed but i mean what do i do with that one but if i see your life transformed you're a great man of god doing mighty things for the kingdom that's my source of joy my paradigm is not outshining people and having people struggling around and then one superstar called joshua selman my desire is to be the least even among everybody rising it still will not destroy my worth lift your hands in the name that is above all names i pray for you the grace that god supplied in my life that granted me the discipline to prepare i am still preparing but the discipline to have started that journey regardless of the challenges i pray for you may that grace come upon your life the spirit of indiscipline and carelessness i declare that it leaves your life this night and forever Some of you, the spirit of slumber and blue tony 
food and sleep that is robbing your destiny be free from it this night some of you inferiority complex the, the pressure to look successful the pressure to belong is making you to do a lot of things you've done too many foolish things the change comes for you now some of us the pressure of association i want to become like my friends my contemporaries that that pressure to to fit in a group that is destroying you i command that pressure to leave you right now for some of you the embarrassment to start again the embarrassment to start again after life has whipped you your business may have failed your ministry may have failed your career may have failed you are um, you apply for a job you try to ask a lady out the, the the courage in the name of jesus i declare that grace for you again in the name of jesus christ i pray for you may you begin to access deeper levels of revelation may god lead you to the books may god lead you to the messages may god lead you to the conferences where your anointing and your wisdom is waiting for you in the name of jesus christ whatever you do not know now that is responsible for your fears responsible for your concerns i pray that the light of god's word will swallow it right now the grace to go back to your drawing board the unashamedness to carry those books you used to write in that you have thrown away those dreams you used to write in some of you had books god used to speak to you every night but just because of little results you threw them may you go back and get those books again the culture listen the healthy spiritual culture you observe that brought you this far i release grace for you to continue it some of you the prayer life that brought you this far you have left it now the word study life the humility that brought you this far you have left it the sense of honor for authority that brought you this far you have left it please whatever you have left that you should not leave i command get back to it in the name of jesus i speak over your life what has not been done in your family the limitations that they have put and say this family cannot cross this i prophesy to you you are the one who will cross that barrier in the name of jesus and i speak finally to everyone here who is discouraged drop your hands down i'm speaking to you there are people here who are discouraged they're saying apostle i have tried things are not working as i'm standing right now i don't even know the name of what i'm doing with my life nothing is working finances zero marriage zero school zero work zero nothing is working i feel as if i should just die i bring you a word from the lord he said is there hope for a tree right even if it be cut off he said there is hope for it at the scent of water the water of the word of god that you are hearing tonight may hope come alive i release upon you the courage some of you have thrown the button i want you to take it back and say no i will make it i will make it like an olympic person who has been handed over the battle and now you left it the problem is if you leave it all the other people who gave it to you will also be failures because of you so you have to finish it grace to finish well in the name of jesus christ now very quickly before we round up please keep standing everybody no moving around there are people here you've heard the word that i've said please keep standing everybody there are people here you have heard the word of the lord and while i was teaching listen please the holy ghost began to speak to you and said apostle is talking about you you need to make your ways right with jesus two groups in one some of you have actually made a decision for jesus at one point in your life 
but there is complete spiritual unseriousness and lukewarmness based on my definition here you see that you are not born again you may have come to recite a prayer but sincerely you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom and then there are those who have never truly made a confession for jesus you've been around christian things but as you began to hear me teach the spirit of god told you this is it this is where i've been trying to lead you you are a great man you are a great woman this is where i've been trying to lead you i'm going to give you a few minutes our time is up and wherever you are there are many people outside i believe many people inside and thousands following us online the beginning of your journey to destiny starts with an encounter with Jesus. I want you to please walk out here. Don't waste our time. No sitting and thinking about it. I want you to walk and come here and say, Man of God, pray for me. I want to start all over again. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. I know you heard the word. I know the Holy Ghost spoke to you. Rebels don't run away from him. Rebels don't come to him. Sorry. They run away from him keep coming no cajoling no cajoling jesus is calling you those outside were waiting for you don't say we came with a family they are seeing me tonight is nobody's business those online you may not be able to walk and come here but i guarantee you, you can open up your heart you are about to make a decision for jesus he said if you are ashamed of Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.